lot of people want me dead. They call it justice. I'm the only one who knows the truth. All I have left is the wind by my side. Hello, Loreheads, and welcome to the League, exploring the League of Legends lore from A to Z. My name is Rebecca. And I'm John. My name is Mark. Today we're talking about the Unforgiven Yasuo, who was released December 13th, 2012. And that's all we're going to say. We can't, we got to jump into it right away. There's too much here. I was going to say you did that intro so fast. Thank you. <laughs> and we let's also go, have a guest. <laughs> we have a guest joining us today. Mr. Tony, say hello. Hello, hello. You may recognize uh, Tony if you've watched our uh, Rift streams. He's often playing with a Then, If you just dropped by the stream to, you know, watch TFT or play ARAMs or something, there's a very good chance that Tony has bought you a subscription because there's nothing he hates more in this world than other people <laughs> watching commercials. Yeah. That is right. Yeah. If you go in and be like, oh, I got an ad, it'll just immediately... <laughs> <laughs> I can fix that. <laughs> I love it. Take a stand. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> By giving them money. Um, <laughs> uh, I will pay to stop this. <laughs> well, we're excited to talk to you about Yasuo because your uh, summer name is Yasuo and um, you play Yasuo a lot. So that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> yes. He is my favorite. Nice. We need that love nice. here because while I am fine with his lore, I want him to die so badly in yeah. the game. He's just the worst. <laughs> he doesn't belong in my lane. I'm going to say it. Yeah. Why are you in fucking <laughs> bot lane, Yasuo? Stop it. Duh. You make me feel like. Look, he's made for every lane. <laughs> I was going to say, he belongs in mid lane, and I don't ter terribly care for it a lot of the time. I always think it's going so well, and then level six happens, and. <laughs> <laughs> he's died 12 times, and all of a sudden he's unkillable. <laughs> <laughs> right, the spike is real. <laughs> All right, so uh, what's Yasuo sound like, everybody? Who's going first? I'll oh, go first. Oh, you want to go question. first? Okay. okay, I'll go first. Um, I liked his quotes a lot, actually. He had like a lot more personality than I was expecting in his quotes. Um, this is something that he says to Shen. <clears throat> Cute mask. You're a mom, so that? I can't get as deep as Yasuo. That's very nice. This is Yasuo if he was a lady. <laughs> yes, yes. Yasuo. Yasuo. <laughs> yeah. Yasuo. Uh, yeah, I like I like Yasuo's voice because he's got two distinct voices, right? He's got the voice actor Yasuo, which is like um death is like the wind, always by my side. Oh, that was good. And then he's got good. serious yeah, serious Yasuo, which is like Yone. <laughs> <laughs> Specifically, when he's talking to you, <laughs> he says that to everyone. He's very confused. <laughs> All right, Tony, you're up. Honor is in the heart, not okay. the name. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> Soria Gatun. <laughs> You destroyed. <laughs> you peaked so hard. That was good. You really put your whole fucking balls into that. Damn. Damn, son. I love it. I was just saying, you put your whole tits into that. <laughs> it's like you didn't have tits. It's something else. What are they? <laughs> what, else, what else does he have a pair of? <laughs> really blanking. What's down there? What's down there? <laughs> <laughs> Micro prints. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> oh, fuck. Foot football. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? You, why do you reference a Christmas story so much? <laughs> why do you reference a Christmas story more than any other movie? <laughs> I don't know, man. Something wrong with me, I think. <laughs> Things that you might not guess it, but Mark is someone who will straight up listen to Christmas music in the middle of summer. <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of nice. They're oh. kicking tunes. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> give me that vibe. Well, on the Riot Universe page, <laughs> Yasuo has oh. his bio. One page of a comic that we could not find anywhere, and seven short stories. Seven, and one of them's not even there. He's apparently a part of more than that. But Seb, I was like scrolling through and I'm like, okay, one, two, three. It's still going. <laughs> it's still right. going, huh? That's enough slices. Which one's not there? <laughs> <laughs> no, 
<laughs> That's enough slices. Right? How much can you do <laughs> with wind? He just like, makes Fucking a little tornado. Anything, apparently. How much have you done to be unforgiven? <laughs> God. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, what story wasn't there, hon? Uh, that was the one from the special book that Mark has. Oh, the super special secret book that, that book, Mark has. That book, it's right there. Hey. Okay. <laughs> Um, anyway, I'll get through the bio, I guess, yeah? By Ariel Lawrence. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Who also did most of his short stories. <clears throat> oh, yeah, she did. Interesting. All right, Yasuo was a normal boy in Ionia who everyone just absolutely fucking loathes for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> I actually wrote down the first line of the bio because it's the sickest burn I've like ever heard in my entire life. Right? <clears throat> this is the first line of Yasuo's bio. As a child, Yasuo often believed what others in his village said of him. On the best days, his very existence was an error in judgment. On the worst, he was a mistake that could never be undone. Fucking dog him. What the f He's like <laughs> a, a, right? a child. <laughs> He was a child it anyway. Would, right? I feel like Yone is always so, like, why do you want to fight so much? Like, bitch, do you know what they say about me? <laughs> why is like a scarlet yeah. letter up in this village? Like, what the hell? Right? I was so young. Uh, Yasuo's started. mom was a single mom uh, to Yone when uh, Yasuo's dad came around. He just like came in, planted his seed, and dipped. <laughs> like, that's what I mean. It's very, it's, it's like weirdly poetic the way they it describe it. It's like, like, it the, like the fall season, he sprung, he flew through. And <laughs> he blew into her life everywhere. like an autumn wind. <laughs> yeah, right. No, and then fucked up to get smokes. Wind. Right? <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> yeah. exactly. I've never yeah. heard a deadbeat dad. Uh, why is my EA thing, like described more poetically? Right. Right. Like, <laughs> guy let you abandon his family. Uh, any uh, anyway, uh, the brothers though were extremely close growing up. Even though Yone was brilliant and perfect, and I guess Yasuo was like a little piece of shit. <laughs> they really hated him. Yone joined a uh, sword school or something, and Yasuo sat outside of it until they let him in. He was very good with a sword, naturally, which everyone hated even more. And eventually, Master Suma is that his name? Soma? Yeah. Soma? Yeah. Soma. I think Suma. I, I, always, I said it in my head as Suma. Suma. Okay, I think they anyway. say it in the, um, oh. the cinematic, the kin of a stained blade, and I'm pretty sure that they say Suma. Suma. Mm. Okay. Uh, he's like the wind master guy in the village. He wants to train Yasuo, but Yasuo wasn't into it. Yone spoke to him, though, and gave him a maple seed in their school. Uh, ugh, in their school, this is a lesson in humility. So Yasuo became Soma's apprentice and bodyguard. Yeah, which they bring up in the bio. We don't actually learn anything about what that means until no. a much later story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Doesn't seem as important at all. He's like, here's some gardening. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, grow a tree. Like your dad, <laughs> plant this seed. <laughs> and then fuck Run off. Away. <laughs> <laughs> Make like a tree. And... <laughs> <laughs> so Noxus invaded Ionia, and Yasuo did manage to not go out and fight, even though he wanted to, until he heard a battle basically right next door. When he got there, though, it wasn't a battle, just a war crime. I believe this is the site of Singed Bomb, yeah. yes, that Riven was a part of. So Yasuo went home not feeling great about everything he just witnessed, and he found his master dead, and being uh, he's being accused of a crime. Everyone believes that he did it. So Yasuo fled to find the real killer, and as he traveled, his like former peers and allies just all were sent to kill him, and he had to fight back or die. So he like murdered all of his old schoolmates, and you know what? I don't feel like they were really very nice to you, Yasuo, so it's okay. Murder's fine if they're not nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Please don't quote me on that. Um, anyway, one day <laughs> they sent Yone. Yone did not uh, win the fight as when they were children. He's the inferior sword boy brother. Yeah. Uh, Yasuo, before he died, he revealed to Yasuo that Suma was killed with wind magic that only he knew. Yasuo started drinking a lot um, until he ran into <laughs> Talia. He trained her for a while until she had to go back to Shrima because of all of his ears bullshit. But before she left, he gave her the maple seed that Yone had given him. And Yasuo decided to go home where it was revealed that Suma was actually killed by accident with Riven's blade when he was trying to help her. So I guess they were all like, did they apologize to him? Oh, sorry, Yasuo. Our bad. We made you kill your brother. Sorry about that. No, nah. nothing. No. Oopsie daisy. <laughs> Yasuo still blamed himself, though. It's not your fault. But anyway, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. Uh, but anyway, uh, he, uh, he, oh, because he did leave his master technically. Yeah. I, it was yeah, his fault. Yeah, what yeah. am I saying? 
Well, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> maybe he could have stopped it if he was there. Right, but right. Right. <laughs> Who could have seen an explosion happen? Mm-hmm. Uh, so he also <laughs> left the village again. He went to the Spirit Blossom Festival hoping to heal his heart, but instead was confronted by a demonic creature that tried to eat him. These festivals seem very dangerous and not calming at all. I'm not sure why he went to this one. I feel like there were other festivals. Don't worry. The demons only come up like you know one out of every five times so like a lot right. of people it's mm, very fun okay uh he was saved though by yone uh was a little bitter admittedly about yasuo murdering him but also didn't want to take revenge or anything the bio ends saying that yasuo is now on a new adventure i assume they mean the ruin king game yeah yeah, so, the, yeah. the best part of the worst event <laughs> i feel like yasuo's story <laughs> just feels over <laughs> honestly <laughs> Don't worry, we've got we've got one more one more little you know, he's headed X, you know, to open his story back up. It's not in the bio, but oh. just, yeah, so yeah. it ends the Rune King ends with him just being like, and now onto my next journey. Yeah, yeah. Yep. He's going to find we'll get into it. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, It'll be knows. a surprise. <laughs> anyway, how do we feel about Yasuo's bio? Man, it goes into things <laughs> it's clearly been updated every time they add something new which is like unlike most but most bios like you know they they write it and then they release new content for the character and the bio never changes this seems like it's mm-hmm. been updated every single piece of new media that's been added to the game <laughs> they've updated his bio to be like keeping it up to date it's weird <laughs> I mean, I feel like Yasuo in general, like, I assume Yasuo resonates a lot with players. Um, You know, he seems like he's really popular. He gets a lot of play in cinematics. So I think that's why they've invested a lot of lore into him. And I think that's why they're like, they're keeping tabs on like six champions and Yasuo is one of them, right? You know what I mean? (laughs) (laughs) Everyone else can fuck off, blow in the wind as it were. Um, But Yasuo, Yasuo, we got to keep up to date because people like Yasuo. That's my read on it anyway. I don't know. I, Tony, did you I, know his I knew before the this? basics on it. Um, I didn't know about the whole Riven thing, about how he found out that Riven killed his master. Yeah, I had no idea about that. But that that explains it a lot when you're playing him. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like Riven, very funny, so. Interesting. That, that's really interesting because I feel like when he because he was released in, in uh, 2012, he's really old. I forgot yeah. how old he is. I know. Um, I feel like. That was a big mystery, like that was kind of played for a little bit of like the reveal that it was Riven who, you know, was the killer was like a big thing. Um, so it's very interesting that you're like completely like a blinders on to that. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Wasn't he released in twenty or uh, in thirteen though? Not twelve. Did I hear that wrong? Or I mean, I, 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 I might have said don't it. Don't worry, we've got notes. the notes. I mean, I have my notes, but it. Oh, I have. December 13, 2012, I I, but it might be 2013. Was, that sounds more right. It's close to 20. Yeah, I thought this was right after his 10 years, but uh, I could be wrong. Well, we can, we can double check. I mean, regardless, 2013, 2012, it's still pretty old. He's right? old. Like, yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. Exactly. Oh, it's December That's why 13, 13 old 2013. Yeah. Oh, okay. Damn, good I catch, good catch. catch. There were a lot of twos and threes in the day, yeah. okay? <laughs> I fucked it up. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we bring, brought you on here, is just <laughs> subject matter expert. Correct our, right. our date. Yeah, SME, right? I know his age. <laughs> <laughs> it's still pretty old. I don't know. I we need an um actually like said, on this podcast. No. Mm-hmm. I, you could, man, you could write a whole fucking season about the shit that we've gotten wrong. You know, man, it's, it's no joke. Yeah, I don't know. The, the, I guess I had forgotten how much they hated him in his 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 uh yeah. his village. Because like I think when okay, because like when he gets accused of murdering uh, Suma, it was really hard for me to kind of understand where the accusers would be coming from in terms of motive like i get that there is some some hard like some evidence that's really hard to explain he was killed with the wind technique you're the only one <laughs> but motive to me seemed really hard like do they really think yasuo wanted to kill suma but if everyone really didn't like him and he was already like kind of the black sheep of the whole school and on top of that he's really good and and it kind of makes everyone upset i could be more into it i think yeah. i would like i would really like a story that showed this scene play out because because not only does he get accused he kills a bunch of people on his way out right and that kind of seals the deal for him he kind of <laughs> oops all murders everybody <laughs> so like i think you could you could write a really in- compelling scene of like you know tensions are running high all of the mature 
you know, skilled students have left to go fight because they say that, that Yone and the others have already left to go actually mm-hmm. fight. So he's like surrounded by apprentices and people who are like, you know, maybe prone to rash decision younger, you know, um, and it can be really compelling to see things kind of spiral out of control. Like no one's really has their listening hat on. And, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> everyone, and also everyone loves Elder Suma. Man, everyone lo- loves and knows Elder Suma across all of Ionia. Yeah. They know that guy. <laughs> so, um, but it is like the inciting incident for his whole journey. So I'd like to get more about it. Does that make sense? Yeah. I am surprised. I mean, I mean, I guess I'm not necessarily saying like, you know, if you don't, if you don't like Yasuo and someone's killed by what seems to be a wind technique, still curious how they even knew that that was a thing. Um, I could see how a lot of the apprentices would be like, no, eh, let's just pin it on this guy. It was probably him. Let's not He's look into it much deeper. He's scary and kind of mean and older, right? Like, yeah, I'm a like older than they are, but yeah, I'm more surprised at how quickly Yone bought into it too like i know mm-hmm. he just kind of assumed that's like fair. well yes well ran so he must be guilty um but that's a kind kind of a fucked <laughs> way to look at it because like you know what the village thinks of your brother you know you know he's not gonna get a fair trial in that exactly. fucking town <laughs> yeah that's a really good point yeah i don't like that that's either. Probably. and even when they face each other for the first time you know fi- you know, finds him I don't know the idea that he wouldn't at least like ask a question or two first, right? Fucking Ionia is yeah. full of it has more magic than it has fucking orphans. Like that's, that's saying, saying a lot, lot. honey. I don't lot. know about that. There's a lot of orphans <laughs> up in there. Sure, maybe Stag there's only up. one wind blade technique, but there's sure as hell more than one wind <laughs> magic technique in Ionia. Like that's come true. on, <laughs> could have been anyone. That's fair. Yeah, you know it's. This is, again, like, if you're going to write scene lits, I would also like the scene of Yone coming back in the aftermath, right? And and them, just something to, like, get an understanding mm, of yeah, like what Yeah, like him Yone killing sees, right? all of these people on the way out. That's a good point. Like, if he had gotten back to the village yeah. and he's just seeing this, like, ten people just cut down that his brother did. And there's eyewitnesses for that one. They're like, there's no... Mm-hmm. I yeah. think that yeah. has to play into it a lot. I, th- I think that has to play into it a lot when he comes back from the war and he sees all that Yasuo actually did mm-hmm. to escape. For sure. Uh, I, I feel like it had to turn his perspective a little bit. Like That's fair. But at the same time, he he's the one that told Yasuo to do this, you know? <laughs> Yasuo, Yasuo, you gotta kill everybody. He, he told him to be the bodyguard. <laughs> <laughs> well, not kill everybody, but he put him in that position. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, mean, it, it I thought it was a good interesting... de- decision to, like, take the apprenticeship, it, yeah. Sure. It was, yeah, but I'm sure it made Yasuo even more hated than yeah. he already was. Potentially to be picked. I think out. that's that's just what I want is an understanding of the landscape of like, is he really the outcast and no one likes him? That's kind of hinted at a little in like um, Brotherhood because there's like that word for like outcast or like something that, that people mm-hmm. don't like that he mm-hmm. really identifies with. So it's like okay, maybe that's kind of hinting at that. Um, but it also is like. You know, I think it would weigh a lot. It would make me connect more with Yasuo if I got in his head during those moments and he was having to fight and kill people who just days before had been, you know, eat, you know, eating with. Or he had been teaching this one student how to work on their parry so he knows that when he kills them, they won't be able to deflect this attack because he had been, you know, trying, you know, like things that really kind of break you up inside because he's very guilt ridden. That's the thing about Yasuo. He's very, he's super guilty all the time. And I, I want to connect more to that, those feelings of guilt and regret. And I don't yeah. always with him. Yeah. I don't feel it in a lot mm-hmm. of his stories either. I get that. Yeah. That, that's a good point. I also, I need so. more of a reason why the village hates him so much. I feel like it's all very not defined i guess and i think it ties to his dad i think that could easily be explained by his his father he had come to this village and fucked it up, ripped it off somehow or he something slept with or, every single lady like, in that he village. planted a seed <laughs> everywhere no i mean <laughs> knowing that dad being a noxian or something kind of like mm, i like that a perfectly. lot that right. would be perfect actually yeah yes yeah because then there's yeah but hmm. mm-hmm because mm. I just don't understand Man. why they hate. He's just a little child. And it starts when he's, like, very, very little. Like, how do you just hate I mean, they did the same kid? shit to Brand. Yeah. People, people just fucking yeah. hate. They, they hate bastards is the thing. Yeah. I guess. I mean, but Yone's also a bastard, isn't he? I guess maybe his dad could have passed away. We don't know what of anything about Yone's dad. Yeah, maybe. It's, mm. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, deadbeat dad's really fucking up Runeterra, huh? <laughs> really? 
yeah, raise your, yeah. raise your kids. Uh, fiction but. reflects reality. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> mm, anywho, that's his bio. Do we want to start getting into these seven short stories? Let's fucking do sure. it. Yeah. I figured we'd go through the the really short ones first because those are kind of like at the Not outset much. of where he's yeah. the start of things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the first one's called... I didn't write this one down. It's like, Road to Ruin. Hey, yeah, ooh. there we go. Don't worry about it. Is this one also by Ariel Lawrence? I didn't write down, like... Uh, these two are actually by credit. Robert Lowe and Joe Lansford. I think they're, like, the oh, only okay. ones Respectively. that are by Ariel Lawrence. Um, actually, okay. they're both by both of them. Interesting. <laughs> oh, it, that's interesting because they're exceptionally short, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> the Road to Ruin's very short. It's It's, like... It's from, I guess, Yasuo's perspective, just kind of reflecting on on where he's at because this is he's still on the run and he's kind of like, you know, I've I've had to kill these people. They sent a student who was super strong, but you can't smash the wind. And I've sent they sent a student who was super fast, but you cannot run the wind. Um, and you know, it sucks, but I'll keep doing it until I bring the killer to justice. And that's kind of it. It's like three paragraphs. You know, it's 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 not even. It's, I wish these had been framed like poems. I think that maybe would have worked better oh, for me. With both yeah. of these. Especially because they establish in a couple places that like Yone is or was a poet. This oh, would have been a great opportunity there. That would have been I'm nice. Sure. Um, yeah, I don't have a I don't have a lot to say about either of these. I'll just say right now. I have nothing I mean, this to say like, about either of them. I'm very sorry. Again, if you were gonna write if you were gonna write scenelets, I would love to see Yasuo on the road having to fight one of these students. You know, I would mm-hmm. love it if it was some 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 lady student who maybe he had like kind of a relationship with. Like that would be nice and like kind of tragic. It's some you girl who we kind of liked. <laughs> oh, no, he's too sad. He was gonna fuck, yeah. but then you know, it's all murders, yeah. right? Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I, <laughs> Yeah. From what I know about men is I don't think they've ever been too, too sad. sad. Uh, I'm uh yeah, I'm, I'm imagining like a hero style uh movie as he like fights the students of his school. That'd be cool as hell. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a Jet Li um, flick. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I might have made you watch it. I don't know. You might have, I don't remember. Yeah. Um It's good. I know I know what you mean though. Right, he's 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 doing horrible things, but it's kind of in service to something greater, or like what he at least thinks is the right thing, you know. Um, but yeah, uh, it can be real sad. The only the only notes I had for this was they were talking about this big strong dude that he had to fight. It's like when we were young, I saw him cleave a tree in two with a single swing of his lit blade. But like you know, how big a tree was it? Cause like I've seen YouTube videos of some some people cutting down some bamboo samurai, trees, and they got like they got like five bamboo trees in one swing. So uh, <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Uh, yeah. Also, he says at the end, but until then, I will not flee. I will follow the truth. Let the wind guide my blade and lead me to the true murderer, the one responsible for the blood on my hands. But he does. He does flee a lot in, in I mean, over the course he of you. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I, anyway, I guess the, the the kind of companion story to this is uh unsheathed blade, is that what it's called? Or is is it blade a without sword a without a sheath, yes. Short sword without a sheath, yeah. Um and this is from Yone's perspective and he's kind of like just reflecting on the fact that he has to go track down yeah. Excuse me, Yasuo, and he describes Yasuo as a, a blade without a sheath, and um, you know he had tried to set him on the right path. This is where we get the explanation for the maple seed that you know it's supposed to represent that it could be something great, but it has to be planted and requires patience and and you know humility, I guess. Uh, and he kind of resolves at the end, it's like I will do it. I will go hunt down my errant brother Yasuo. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so. so, a seed is just a seed, but given time, one may come to know the beauty it holds within. And, you know, even if Yone does think that Yasuo killed Master Suma, he just wanted to see the beauty within Master Suma, so he really um. did take your lesson to heart. <laughs> Could you imagine if that was the explanation he gave Yone? He's like, he told me to find the beauty within Suma. I found it. And That's he's just holding all the intestines. <laughs> that is some gin shit. You're right. Uh, Throws a heart at him. <laughs> he was an organ mm-hmm. donor. <laughs> <laughs> 
uh, as a kidney. <laughs> <laughs> stupid, that's stupid shit. <laughs> So yeah, I don't, know. I don't have a lot for those two. Like I said, um, I feel like these were really these were like the first two pieces that were kind of released for Yasuo, as I recall. I vaguely uh, remember these coming out even, hmm. and um, I kind of like the idea of releasing companion pieces between the two of them. Um, I wish there was like a big thing that that kind of bounced between, like I you know like we're talking about like you know Yasuo getting accused and then Yone kind of seeing the next thing and then like the next thing is Yasuo and you know kind of like bouncing between the two. Yeah, that would um, be good. This is a little too short for me to really pull anything out of for... And, it, and it's also, it's so, like, there's no literal, like, happening. It's just sort of musings, almost, yeah. from both of them. These are, like, their toilet yeah. thoughts. Like, they're both having a dump. <laughs> <laughs> this is what they're, like, contemplating. It's their blog. <laughs> thoughts on the John. <laughs> thoughts on the John. Um, okay, so I think next is probably Brotherhood. So that was... I, uh, I actually had that one just, pretty late because Brotherhood leads straight into the cinematic, which leads straight into him leaving for the Ruined King. Do you think so? What what makes you think that? I'm curious. I I because it said he was headed. Does he for say these going to Wele? Yeah, right at the end. Okay, maybe I missed it. Okay, then yeah, that's fine. Um, it's not a big deal. I think it was because like, what? Well, well, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. It's, it's all about understanding whether or not something is like pre or post confessions, right? right like, has he yeah. been exonerated or not? Um, that's fine. So are we at are we at confessions then? Is that just our, our next one we hop into? I think or we I guess are we could at... do Kin of a Stained Blade if we want to. Do you want to talk about No. Sorry. I it's hard because the cinematic has a bunch of flashbacks in it that happened before. <laughs> it's true. Ignore me, ignore uh, me, ignore me. Are we on yeah. confessions? Is that what's next? That's, I think okay. confessions is next. I think um it is it is weird in that like he gets he gets exonerated early on, but still kind of finds himself on the run. Um, but like, I mean, it kind of makes sense. Um, I, I or feel do you like think bird in the branch is what about bird in the branch? That might be before actually. That's probably I mean, before I would argue. Yeah. Um, like I wasn't sure that was, that was kind of the question. That yeah. one was the question mark for me. Um, it so would make else? sense. Cause he does get, you know, he gets, he gets accused, he gets accused there again. But, yeah, uh, what I will say also is that in the realms of Runeterra story, um, one of the other characters makes note, like knows that he has been exonerated. So it seems like once confessions mm -hmm. happens, word spreads pretty, pretty well, right? Because it's a yes. place that he's that's not wherever it is that Suma is. Gotcha. So I think Burn the Branch is probably right. So this is the Talia story. Um, it's it is a Talia story for the most part, but Yasuo yeah. is in it. Um, she is. This is her being dumped. She's been just been dumped on Ionia by the Noxians because she wouldn't kill a bunch of innocents. Uh, sucks to be her, I suppose. But they, 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 they dump her on Ionia. She accidentally causes an avalanche. Um, she, you know, she sees Yasuo, causes an avalanche, and then kind of uses her rock powers to sort of sort of save him. She kind of catapults him kind of to safety. <laughs> he didn't get killed. You know, at, at He's the end alive, of the day. folks. He's, uh, what He's more can breathing. you ask for? Yeah. Um, so she's she she goes to go go down and check on him, and he's like, ah, he kind of knocked me around a bit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's but, a really good Yasu impression. <laughs> I mean, this I, I will say just as an aside, I I'm a big fan of his voice actor uh, Liam O'Brien. I really yeah. like him and a lot of his work. So I've heard his voice a lot. Also, <laughs> I it is um, very recognizable. I was playing. Um, yeah. God, what was the game? Hold on, let me pull this up real quick because I w I literally like hopped into a Steam game the other day. Um, he does a few rune tarot cards, and if you listen to them, you can hear him too. It's kind of interesting. Nice, yeah. But I like uh, Critical Role, and I like a few games he's worked on. So, oh, actually, fuck no. This was uh, this was on Xbox Live, so I'm never gonna find it. But yeah, it was one of those. It was like an escape room type puzzle game, um, and. Yeah, some dude talked. I was like, oh, it's fucking Yasuo. Holy <laughs> shit. Oh, you know what's wild? This reminds me. I was playing, um, Christ, I was playing The Saboteur. Do you remember that? PS2, World War II, yeah. open world game. Um, and I heard the, there are guys, there are, there are Nazis, obviously, talking in German. And I recognized one of them speaking in German as Liam O'Brien. Because <laughs> in, in the second season of the Critical Role, he does a, a super German accent. And you can just tell when you hear him. Um, I'm I'm like 99 percent certain it was it was him doing one of the the, the German guys. Anyway, yeah, great. What voice. we're talking about, Talia. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so Talia and and Yasuo, they're kind of recuperating. They're having come back and forth where Yasuo is kind of probing to understand where she's at, and and essentially he kind of like poses some sort of like driving some some real like 
hard questions to her about kind of what she's doing, what she's, you know, was what it is that she's like, I don't know, afraid of or whatever. And she kind of leaves in the huff. She doesn't want to deal with it. So she kind of fucks off, um, runs into a monster and, and does manage to kind of kill the monster, but also sort of falls off a cliff in the process of doing so. And then Yasuo luckily is there to kind of Jana her back up to, <laughs> to safety. Don't worry. <laughs> right. <laughs> but this time it heals instead of hurts. And um, <laughs> I guess he kind of recognizes that, you know, she could use a little help, a little guidance. And so they become like they have a mentor mentee relationship and it kind of cuts to them in a tavern after a day of training and they're kind of, you know, they're just kind of chatting back and forth and some some merchants, I guess, come in and they're sort of talking about like, oh, you know, that thing you got, Shurima, is Shurima. It's really valuable now that, you know, Shurima's back. Shurima's <laughs> back, baby. Um, and she's like, what the fuck? And he's like, yeah, you know, your, your hawk god, that Azir fella, is back. I hear, I guess he wants all his slaves back. I don't know, which freaks her out. Um but then a bunch of ruffians, not ruffians, they're like guards. They're like proper, right. like, they're like the closest thing to cops. I don't know. <laughs> uh, they come in and they're like, you, Yasuo, you're a murderer. We're going to get you. And, uh, you know, <laughs> they they fight. They have a scuffle. Uh, Talia and Yasuo fight them off. Yasuo does kill them. And they, they manage to escape. And, and so he kind of conf- confesses to Talia, like, yeah, you know, that's my actual name. I guess he hadn't told her before. They... They say I'm a murderer. I didn't do it. And, and to her credit, she kind of already knew that, right? Like, she she knows him well enough. And, and well, um, I and think she, we should clarify. It's not necessarily that he's not a murderer. They said they okay, accused okay, him okay, of okay, a okay. crime he didn't commit. Yeah, yeah. He's yes, definitely that's a, a murderer. Fair point, yeah. <laughs> I mean, is Which it murder? Which she literally <laughs> just witnessed. Always self-defense. <laughs> that's not murder, your honor. Yes. <laughs> they were trying to kill him. I've been in the wrong place at the wrong time about 50 <laughs> times, your honor. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you know what? Let me finish, and then we'll get into it. Because I, I, do, I do kind of agree, I will say, with, with what you're saying. Like, unironically. Um... Well, no, not not unironically. I I agree with the, the perspective that Yasuo has, has fucked up royally, and I really don't get why he continues to do what he does. Anyway, um, she's going back to Shrima. She got to check on her family, and and she offers to have Yasuo come with her, and he does consider it for a second, but he's still he's still got something to do on in Ionia. He's got to still find justice, and and uh, you know. They, they, they sort of part ways, but he does give her, he gives her the maple seed, like the bio mentioned, so that she can kind of go on her own journey. And he points her in the direction of, here's how you get to the Shurima, to the Shurima, uh, <laughs> from here. You know, you take the Frail Yord Express. In the most, and, uh, like, they, convoluted direction ever, which we assumed, yeah. I think, in the Talia episode was to avoid, like, Noxian barricades mm-hmm. or some shit like that, but yeah. it is so roundabout. Yeah, I know. Um. But yeah, and then they kind of they kind of go their separate ways. You know, he's got he still has a journey to follow, I suppose. In Ionia, um, what do you think Talia called him before she knew his name? Is it like Bob or something? Probably Bob. Hey Probably you. Bob. <laughs> hey you. Hey you. <laughs> hey blowhard. Good question. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> right. You with the sword. Um, yeah, I don't know. I. Go ahead. Yeah, this was. Uh, I mean, I, I, yeah, there's a few things in this story for me. Uh, first of all, I like the very beginning when, when Talia, like, puts up that wall to protect herself and then, like, the snow covers the temple. And then she feels so guilty, like, oh, no, what did I do? I just covered the temple by doing this. It's like, well, no, like, the avalanche was going to cover the <laughs> temple regardless. Like, <laughs> you mm-hmm. protecting yourself didn't really you redirecting the snow a little bit didn't make it go oh it was gonna go over the cliff uh also i have a lot of like this this story in particular is what made me think that yasuo's quotes were gonna be way more like fucking fortune cookie um Mm. because like he talks like that through the (laughs) whole story he's gotta seem like the wise mentor to talia yeah yeah can't let her know the truth that he's like a beer dad. <laughs> yeah. Destruction, creation, neither is holy, good or bad. You cannot have one without the other. What matters is intent, the why of choosing your path. That is the only real choice we have. 
and he's got another one, uh, which, I mean, it, it really made me feel like Yasuo and Hui would just, like, have a field day talking <laughs> at each other and not to each other. It'd be so great. You should read the Orchid's Bloom story from the, the book, because he, he and the, the main, the, like, perspective character, they only talk like that for, like... 90% of it, I would say. <laughs> they're having a fight, and they're actively talking like that to each other. It's kind of like... I kind of like it almost. If, like That's his whole shtick, is that he's just constantly talking in, in metaphor, almost. Do you guys... I mean, this is a deep cut. I don't I don't know if anyone's going to resonate with this, but more, do you guys remember the mentor in Mystery Men? <laughs> yeah, the Sphinx? Yeah, the Goddamn Sphinx. right, I remember the Sphinx. <laughs> Who only Why am I balancing a tech? Right. <laughs> I can't run my head. If you do not learn to master your rage, let me guess: your rage will become your master. You, all you that's do is reverse. Say, right? but you, yeah, that's what you're going to say, right? <laughs> not necessarily. I could quote that movie like verbatim, like moment to moment. I've ever seen this movie. Uh, you haven't seen Mystery Man? Holy shit, Tony! Have you seen Mystery Man? I have not. Oh my god, is dude! That, we're going to watch got Ben Stiller. We got Janine Garofalo. We got Pee Wee Herman. John H. Macy. John Do H. Macy. <laughs> got, um, oh, fuck. Who is it that plays Casanova Frankenstein? I know. Uh, uh, what's his fucking name? Oh, no. That sucks because he's probably one of the best parts of that movie. <laughs> uh, wow, I hate myself now that I don't remember that. <laughs> Dane Cook is in it just for a moment, but man, what a moment. As what the is- waffler? <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> That movie's a time capsule, and it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Anywho. I'm so glad Yasuo has, like, no more <laughs> to talk about, so we can go on mystery. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so there was a point here. This is Talia-related, but I didn't bring it up in, in Talia, and it just struck with me here, really. Like, it said, The girl released a stone from her sling. It hit the great beast near the main, the fur taking the brunt of the impact. And, like, I know she can't really control it that well yet, but it's still a bit embarrassing that she's using a stone sling as a weapon, as a stone weaver, and still missing her shots. That's got to sting a little. Right. Unlike her shots. Because oh, she... <laughs> <laughs> well, Yasuo was giving her guff earlier, like, oh, you pick up stones by hand. That's weird for a stone weaver. Right. right? He should kind of be there just, like, <laughs> shitting on her the whole time, almost. That's what he learned, <laughs> you know, from his own people. <laughs> sure. Had to be shit on. It's true. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, he also has a quote here that says uh, nothing was broken that cannot be mended and anytime someone says some shit like that I imagine Riven bursting through the wall like the fucking Kool-Aid man <laughs> <laughs> what is broken cannot be reforged but it can but what, can it? what is broken should be reforged I don't remember guys <laughs> line uh, yeah <laughs> I have a, uh, there's one quote here, and I feel like, I mean, we don't necessarily have to take a shot every time it comes up, because I'm already taking shots, but, um, (laughs) uh, the captain waded through the empty stools towards them. He stopped a blade's length from the table where they sat. Everyone in this fucking world measures distance by blade length that happens in at least three of his stories alone, and it's not just him. (laughs) You're right. You're fucking right. Oh my god, you're right. They measure time and distance. You're totally right. Uh, 27 blade length to go. Like, yeah, you're, oh my god, you're so it's right. Like measuring rift things in Timos. Mm. <laughs> no, because Timos always the same size, so it's not like that's the weirdest part. Yeah, like sword. they never like, specify what type sword? of blade because a Yasuo blade is very different than a Shen blade, who also measures distance and blades, which is very different than a Riven blade, who also measures distance and blades. I bet it was before her blade got. Circumcised, you know, like <laughs> mm. that's why that's why Noxus and, I, and Ionia are fighting is because they disagree about blade length mm. measurements, right? No, they really just fucking... should measure it in blade lengths, but just this metric versus imperial is the whole like, cost. Please, just use the imperial system. And they're like, no, we like blades, we like blade. <laughs> just like we like feet. <laughs> fucking U.S. and their feet gods. <laughs> God damn. I didn't think about that until you mentioned it. <sighs> yeah, um, I, I think, like we said in the Talia episode, I do like this relationship, but it's really hard because it, it goes from their first meeting to them, like, 
split like parting ways like immediately and it's yeah. like well, i don't know yeah it's a really rush, rush relationship I, well, i'm sure mm-hmm. we talked about that a lot in the talia episode like yeah. almost immediately they're having this like mentor mentee banter and i'm like you don't you haven't known him long enough to be like oh yasuo oh he's doing this it's been like 45 <laughs> minutes you know? although i could kind of i could kind of see it a little bit just in that like she comes from a place where her stone weaving is kind of an anomaly mm. and then like she comes to a place and the first dude she meets can control the wind like oh fuck yeah right there you that was lucky <laughs> that's right <laughs> do you think she thought like there was a, an awkward period where she thought all ionians could do like elemental magic shit oh, and probably. Yasuo had to kind of like right oh no that's you can't no <laughs> <laughs> You can't just ask people if they have an elemental magic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, uh, when the guards bust in, by the way, like you know, they're like, hey, "Yasuo, we know all about your your murders, and we're here to take you in." And then it said that like one of the guards leveled a loaded crossbow, another knocked an arrow to a longbow. Like, it really seems like they know everything about Yasuo except the most important mm. detail. <laughs> mm. Like, hey, don't use projectiles against this fucking yeah, dude. The it's wanted not going to do shit. The wanted posters don't have, like, can use wind magic on them. I feel like they should maybe put that detail in there. Strong against, weak against. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, I would like that if that was something he developed on his own. That would be kind of neat. Like, if it surprised them, right? Like, mm. you know, I don't know. Maybe. It's like the first um, time he ever used it. <laughs> sure, yeah. Um, okay, so real quick. We were talking about earlier. He kills these these people, right? As far as yeah. you know, these people are just doing their jobs, and they have no way of knowing that he's innocent, right? They've got he, a great he reason that. to believe he's guilty. <laughs> sure, yeah. I mean, at this point, he's killed a lot of people who have just been trying to apprehend him. Um, and I, I, I get that he's really... He's really guilt. He's really guilt ridden. But I would like it if he tried to de-escalate. He never tries to de-escalate. <laughs> I know, like they paint him as a kid, as he's like impetuous and is always fighting. But you know, a lot of shit has happened since then, and I feel like maybe he would be changed by it and would want to be like, I didn't do it. I don't know. Maybe he said that a million times, and it always falls on deaf ears. I don't know. It would be nice to have Talia call him out on it a bit more. Maybe like that should yeah. be kind of shocking to her, right? The worst part of that decision for me too because like yeah we we know that yes yes was a way fucking better fighter than these guys he could have gotten out of here easily without fucking killing anyone like but then they just get on his trail again so that's the thing he after he kills the folks he hears people coming after him again so they're like oh we should run away now and talia hops on her stones he rides the wind and they just run away. <laughs> like, why yeah. not just do that? <laughs> yeah. Because he likes to kill people. He likes to kill people. He fucking loves it so much. He just needs to kill people. My Yasuo yeah. thinks as he tower dives at level two. <laughs> you know, okay. I know we have a ton of shit to talk about, but Tony, talk about Yasuo. Something I've always seen people say about Yasuo in game is that you don't need to kill him. You can just wait, chill out, because he will kill himself. Because he will get impatient. Does that resonate Tony, with you? you? Does that feel that? accurate? It's hundred percent true. He's, okay. a, you know, he's an aggressive champ. So you're it, gonna go it. in. Eventually, you're gonna mess up and you're gonna die. And right, you know okay. that happens more than you succeed. So <laughs> he has that reputation. You do it eight times okay. in a row, and then you get one item, and you're fine. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, I just wanted to confirm. I just wanted to confirm. Yeah, I don't know if they. Yeah. If they had been threatening Talia, I think like that is something you could have done. Like maybe someone gets a hold of Talia, and then that gives him more impetus to like kill some dudes. So that's I don't know. Uh, in this story, right. he mentions that he's heard that desert mead is quite good, and I want to know why we haven't heard more about these desert bees that are apparently existing. <laughs> I haven't heard shit well, about it's... that. They're six feet long and they have nine stingers and you know. I, 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 I think you mean three sword lengths long. long. <laughs> <laughs> yes, They're probably normal ass bees and with everything else in Ruterra, that's like the nicest thing that can happen to you <laughs> is like getting attacked by bees. <laughs> oh, this isn't so bad. Yeah, okay. <laughs> we do in this story uh, get the origin story of Yasuo's hair tie too. I mean, he does have a hair tie in mm. old lore. This is just the, the origin of his current hair tie. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Which is a piece like of, get- uh, yeah, a piece of Shereman 
thread from from Talia's robe. Yeah, he gets his well, he gets his his shawl that he's wearing at the start of Confessions too, right? Like that's the thing she gives him also, right? Is that right? That was how I read it, or is that just his hair tie that she gives him? You know um, what I'm talking about. Because at the start of Confessions, he's wearing a he's wearing oh, yeah, like a yeah. shawl kind of over his stuff, and I thought that was what she had also given him. Oh, maybe him. I missed that. If so, mm-hmm. it's entirely possible though, because it was it was pretty it was already pretty fucked up. Um, they mentioned in the story, and it's mm-hmm. pretty fucked up in Confessions too. So that would make sense. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, he gives her the seed, and she gives him a, a little, you know, uh, like I said, shawl is the only word I can use to describe it that he he wears. So. Man, she's going right, to be so sad when she realizes the seed's not going to grow in Shirima. <laughs> exactly. That's right? a bad trade on her part. Although I guess she doesn't need a coat in Shirima either, so... Is the point to just carry the seed around? Do you never plan it? <laughs> yeah, he never he... did plan it. What a jerk. Right. Uh, <laughs> maybe it's some, it's some it in his belt. fucking magic Shirima. Yeah. Like, I can almost see that Like she finally gets home in her family and she plants the seed and uses her cool magic to make it grow into something beautiful I like a collar like shen did <laughs> mm. yeah sure mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. yeah uh all right you want to hop into confessions one sure. the, this is one of the big ones mm-hmm. this was by this is by ariel lawrence last one was also by ariel lawrence yeah three of mm-hmm. uh his seven short stories are confessions <laughs> of a broken blade <laughs> that's yeah. just in three uh-huh. parts yeah yeah and to be fair he's not in most of it this is ribbon's yeah. story of her coming like her being properly like uh accused and absolved of her crimes um so he shows so it, it's it's following ribbon right she's living in ionia trying to just forge a new life after her her old her old bullshit and yasuo shows up at the start she's tilling the field and yasuo is kind of there at the the edge of the field and you know he she is she's reciting words she's trying to kind of learn ionian and he is he he kind of shows up correcting her right and he's he's kind of asking these very pointed questions um because he he kind of knows that she is not she's not Ionian right, um, and he seeming assumedly has come there because he knows that she is the one who <laughs> killed that old elder Suma after all. Um, they're kind of having this little tense standoff, and then some riders are coming in the distance, and she kind of turns away and turns back, and he's gone, and there's just sort of a wind blowing Fucking in the air. Batman <laughs> yeah, does he the Batman's shit to Talia lot. too. <laughs> yeah, he Batman's a lot. Um, uh, Ribbon gets taken in. She is being accused of the crime because new evidence has come forward. And uh, um, as her adoptive parents are going to the courthouse, um, the her mother uh, trips over this guy who's wearing this. So he's wearing the shawl, like I mentioned at the start, that's kind of covering up his his himself. And and the same guy is is kind of sitting outside the court, and he's sort of wrapped in the shawl. The alcohol, you know, reeks of alcohol and and. Uh, <laughs> Could be you anything. know, they're sort of like, yeah, they're sort of like, oh, what are you doing here? You sh- this isn't the place to sleep off a night of sins, you know, and he's being all like vague and like, uh, yeah, they're like, we want to make sure that, you know, an innocent isn't accused of some, like convicted of a crime. And he's sort of like, yeah, I'm here for the same thing, uh, you know, Opa. And uh, they, 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 they wander off into the courtroom, but they look back and he's gone and there's just a breeze blowing. <laughs> right. Honestly, if I could do that, I would do it all the fucking time. So, you know, I can't, like, fault him for that. That's how you can play peekaboo, right? That would be some slick oh, shit. Oh, man, blow up Where's mama? <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> um, so this is where it comes out that Riven, yeah, Riven killed, uh, killed Suma, but it was accidental. She had brought her blade in to have it destroyed. You know, she regretted all the shit she had done for Noxus, and she wanted Suma to destroy it, and apparently it's got something where it, when it gets too much, like, energy or magic or whatever in it, it kind of just explodes, and the tip of it will kind of, it's like a neck-seeking tip. I don't know, man. That thing just, like, <laughs> will embed itself in the oldest man available. Um... <laughs> But yeah, so she's she is they, they 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 get this evidence and they're like it's her blade she did it and she does confess to it and so she is being held, assumedly to be to be tried or like executed or punished. Um, and, and it's that night her adopted father has come to free her because he knows that she's innocent. She didn't mean to do any of this bullshit. Um, but Yasuo also shows up ready to enact his vengeance, and they start kind of you know they they start kind of 
duking it out and they're having this back and forth, you know, and Yasuo is like, does your, what weighs heavier, the blade or your past, Riven? Um, <laughs> but as they're duking out, the blade's just like, it's filling up with all that wind energy and then it, and the, the tip shoots out and it's aimed right for the neck of that adopted father and it's you know he's, he's a sad guy and then Yasuo does his, his Hasagi to to stop the, the tip and, and in doing so sort of saves him, the saves her adopted father and also kind of realizes the truth of it that yeah it was an accident she can't control it she didn't mean to do that um shit and this is where he kind of comes to the conclusion that you know um Ultimately, it is my fault as Yasuo because I was his bodyguard. I left, and if I had been there, I could have stopped it. And not only would he be alive, but I also wouldn't have caused Riven to have experienced all this guilt. And the the magistrate who had been overseeing all of the court proceedings is also there and had been watching the whole thing. And is like, ah, hmm. well, Yasuo, I guess that's a you know that's good to know. And also Riven, that's also good to know. And uh, you know, Yasuo, the first step is is you know. Admitting that it's not your fault, I suppose, and living with it. Um, so Yasuo kind of wanders off because he has to go deal with these new revelations, and, and Riven gets kind of forgiven, essentially. And she gets to live a cool life. Working on a farm. <laughs> <laughs> For the time being. That uh, sounds so very nice. So she gets nice. off the farm. Yeah, that's true, right? Right. California, here I come, right back where I started from, right? You know, for, you know, um, I like how Cal- California's noxious. <laughs> now, but, uh, Tony, I know I uh, I gave you the, the list of all the stories to read and everything, and this was one of them. I did forget to mention that this was 90% ribbon <laughs> and like 10% Yasuo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I My noticed. bad on that one, buddy. <laughs> it, it's it's all right. Yeah, but it, see, it you learned all know. about ribbon, so that's that's good. Expanding minds here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I love that when we first meet Yasuo, he's just popping out of the woods to dad explain how to say dad <laughs> to fucking <laughs> ribbon. <laughs> it is his language. It's it's his language. It's, uh, it's also, weird to me that he didn't he didn't like try and do something with her then. I don't know because he seems pretty sure that she's like like he's there for a reason, right? Yeah, maybe he just didn't want to like he heard the horses and was like, God, I can't kill another person with witnesses. Not another one. Come on. You know <laughs> do you what? think this that's is the line? Reason- <laughs> this is it. <laughs> Honestly, that's kind of a reasonable explanation. (laughs) I would be, you know, maybe he wanted to be sure that she was guilty, right? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I don't know. Uh, We've got a, he stopped the blade's length from Riven in this one, too. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Also, this is such a bummer for (laughs) Yasuo. He came here so fucking ready to just settle the score and get vengeance for his master's murder and, like, put those ghosts to rest, only to realize, like, God damn it, it was an accident. <laughs> and God, it probably is my fault. Fuck. <laughs> That's it's an edging sharper fault. than Yasuo's yeah. sword, am I right? John. Ayo. I kind of like it. I don't know. I think, like, even if she had been a full on proper Noxian killer and he had killed her, I think he very easily would have ended up in the same spot. You know, he would have twisted the logic pretty quick to, you know. I don't know, if you really want to find guilt, like, you know, he, he kind of, like, like, this made sense for me to me for Yasuo, that, like, if you really want to find a way to blame yourself, you'll find it, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you'll self-destruct in some way. I don't know. Yeah. Well, yeah. And then I think this leads into Orchid's Bloom, I think, is safe. I don't have a writer for this one, because I, I don't have the book, but... You got Ooh, it. I think it is. Let's double check. I think it's actually. God dang. Uh, I think the writer actually, funny enough, narrated this when they did the tenth anniversary stream. Um, I think he actually read through it. I'm pretty sure I read. So, uh, Michael Yishao. Yeah. Oh, okay, nice. Um, yeah. So, if, if funny enough, if you don't have the book and you want to get a sample of what one of the stories is like, if you go find that stream, he read through the whole thing himself. Uh, so, I think it's the only one they've actually put out. Handy. Anyway. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So this follows a an elderly woman named Jing. Uh, Jing runs a tea shop, uh, the eponymous Orchids Bloom. Uh, Jing is also blind, so she is opening up for the day, and a stranger comes in. It's the first customer of the day. 
I wonder who it could be. It's Yasuo, everybody. <laughs> Yasuo has come. Um, and for the most part, they're just kind of shooting the shit. You know, she's there's something about him that is kind of familiar, but she can't place it, you know. And, and we also kind of get that she is waiting for somebody, but we don't know who. Um, but he's very respectful. They, they, uh, they, she gives him his tea and they're kind of, you know, bantering back and forth. There is a great moment where, um, Gosh, you know, because they're talking, they're both talking, like you said, in this sort of like poetic sort of like, oh, the spring brings new arrivals. And Yasuo is sort of like, oh, but not all new arrivals are good. And she has a moment where she stops and is like, you know, that's very dark and serious of you, which is just like Yasuo to a T, right? She right. nails him on the, <laughs> on the first go. It's like they all talk like they're members of the White Lotus in, in Last Airbender and they're talking in code. <laughs> It's, it, a lot of the story is kind of like that with, with these two, their dialogue. But but she, she's she's prepping more food for him, and then uh, in comes another group, and these ones are not cool. They are obviously <laughs> looking for trouble. They are caught, they're they're you know like a group of five who are rough and rowdy, um, and uh, she's. <laughs> She's walking along. Tea shops to be rough and rowdy. <laughs> it's funny well. that you. It's oh, funny no. that you use that term in particular because in my notes I said that a group of rough and tumbles. Ninety-year-old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> Ne'er do wells show well, it up. <laughs> it does say that they were looking for stronger beverages, so oh. that kind of explains why they were. They were there. already drunk and thought it was a bar, it, right? Probably. <laughs> Bring me well, some what? tea. <laughs> it is my yeah. They're like, she's like, oh, what do you? They're like, what do you have? And she's like, tea. And they're like, anything strong? And she's like, black tea. <laughs> um. This is not her first rodeo. She already knows what the deal is going to be with these people. And, and of course, she goes to serve them. They trip her. And then they sort of be like, oh, you spilled tea on me. How are you going to repay that? And, and the whole time, she's, like, constantly sighing at them, by the way. She's like, we're going to do this whole fucking rigmarole, really? Uh, for free tea? Come on, guys. Um, <laughs> it's $2 tea. Come on. <laughs> right. Come on. I was going to give it to you for free. But, um, but they, they, they do... they you know they, they start getting into it and they're like well you know what we'll just take you and they start to try and pull her away um and the leader goes to grab her and can't move her um and then multiple of them start trying to yank on her and they cannot move her um she's like channeling magic into her own like legs to be rooted to the ground um and yasuo is still there and she's sort of like eh, don't don't worry about it yasuo don't interfere it's okay it's okay um but then they start you know drawing swords they're like cut her he said to take her back alive, not well. I was like, mm, what's going on here? And this is when Yasuo interjects. And so does so does Jing. She is very capable with this. She has a bamboo cane that she uses to kind of tap around and see. And the two of them beat the shit out of these ruffians. <laughs> like to the point that, like I said, they're kind of bantering back and forth while they're kicking these these this group's asses. Um, it's really not a big deal. And uh they're all kind of beaten. They're not, none of no one's actually killed. Um, mostly she's been just kind of like, you know, hitting them on the ass with the cane and stuff like that. And it's like, it's, you know, they kind of have the handle in the situation when the, the four of them that are still capable stand up and they sort of shift their stances. And, and Jing can do this thing where she can see into the spirit realm and that's how she can kind of see what's going on in this moment. And she sees that they are pulling this, this energy into themselves. They're doing this particular stance. The, the temperature is dropping and she recognizes that that's one of my techniques. Uh oh. And they all have these cool ass frost blades, right? And they start fighting and then they realize that even when they deflect these frost blades, it will kind of sap energy out of you. Both her and Yasuo are like, the fight can't go on. So Jing does this super cool move and boom, big blast of ice energy sort of coats everything. And this is also where, like, right before that, Jing is like, oh, so my son sent you. Right, and we realize that we we learn that her son, um, I want to say it's Bon Lao is his name, um, has strayed in some horrible way, and and has in fact hired this group to come kidnap her in the first place. Um, but she blasts everybody with ice energy. Yasuo is 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 still up and about, even though he's a little cold. Uh, <laughs> and, and they're, they're kind of talk, <laughs> and they're, they're kind of talking, and, and she's like, "Well, you know, I'm gonna have to clean this up. I'm gonna have to defrost them and, and send them on their way." And 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 uh, you know, Yasuo is like, "Huh, that's weird that you would help these people." And before they can kind of continue, um, the leader of this group sort of breaks free of the ice and stabs uh, 
stabs Jing. Um, and that's when Yasuo... Yasuo at this point has actually not been killing anyone. I don't think he's even stabbed anyone because he doesn't want to get blood in the tea shop. Uh, <laughs> but this is where he ult, he ults. He kills the leader. Um, and then after it, Jing is kind of... They're kind of having this back and forth and talking about how, you know, like... Yasuo is, is asking, why is it that you would, you know, let these people go? Um, they came to kill you. What are you going to do? And, and Jing is explaining that, well, you know, um, my son and these people as a you know an extension of him are all my responsibility it's my fault it's my failure uh as a, a teacher and a mother to that he has strayed and i kind of hoped that he would find himself and he hasn't so i'm gonna go find him and help him you know be better and if we have to talk with kane and sword first we will but eventually we'll get it figured out um and you know if you, you know do you have a student and he's like eh, you know kind of he's like okay well if she fucked up would you feel responsible? Wouldn't you be responsible, right? Um, and, and, you know, at the end of it, Yasuo is sort of like, he's trying to help. He's trying to like, hey, let me help clean up. And Jing kind of tells him not to. And and I do like there's this bit where Yasuo kind of is like, I don't really know where to go. I don't know what to do, right? He's <laughs> lost his purpose since he can't find vengeance. And she kind of um, just kind of tells him, you know, you just look forward and go on the path. Um, you know, you can go check out Waylay maybe. I don't know. Uh <laughs> Um, but she kind of just sets him on on his way, and then it kind of ends ends there. On his um, way, lay. Hey, yo. Yeah. Um, but Do yeah. you think that um, Jing is the reason that old man Yasuo fights with a bamboo cane now? Ooh. I don't know. I kind of like it, though. I was so in, into... I want to know what's going on with old man Yasuo. I'm waiting on you to tell me what's up with old man Yasuo, man. Um, but yeah... Uh, did, did any of y'all actually read the story? I assume not, right? No, no. you can't find it online for no, legal you gotta read reasons. The actual text. And I didn't yeah. realize that they had the narration. I would have listened to that for sure. Yeah, I would say go Were listen to it. you able to find it's... it, Tony? Or... No. Yeah, you were in the same spot. No. <laughs> we we yeah. read the synopsis, no. you know, the, the, the highlights. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I, I did like it because, like I said, she's she's blind. So a lot of the descriptions about, like, what she's kind of perceiving are through the way things sound, the way things sort of smell, um, or just, like, sort of the feeling of, of kind of what's going on. You know, like, when the rough and tumbles show up, it talks about how, like, the way that she hears them throwing their weapons on and kind of kicking their boots up. And she can kind of tell that they're doing it purposefully to be loud and obnoxious and intimidate, right? Um, you know, they're laughing, but there's not actual humor in it, you know? Uh, she can hear the, them going to trip her in the first place. I don't know. It's just, there's there's moments like that, or like um, when they're first kind of confronting her, she's like, "Oh, well, at least that guy left." Uh, uh, Yasuo, and at some point in the story, I guess I forgot to mention, she recognizes that it's Yasuo. She was a big friend of uh, Elder Elder Suma. Everyone knows Suma and loves him, so she <laughs> knew it was him at some point. But she's like, "Oh, thank God, Yasuo left." I don't, you know, she doesn't hear him breathing or moving or anything. And then as the confrontation kind of escalates. All of a sudden, he talks, and it surprises her because she's he's like a master of being like completely still and in the moment, and you know, focused or whatever. So there's like that aspect of it was was I think a neat way to write the story rather than just like a, a, a more straightforward tale. I don't know. Do you think that Yasuo like manipulates the wind to move in and out of his lungs so he doesn't have to breathe? What a fucking know, weirdo! Be, right. <laughs> That's kind of like, cool. That's worse than mouth breathing. <laughs> I don't even know what you call it. Recycled I'm breathing. <laughs> He's really good at playing a single note on the flute for nine hours straight. <laughs> it's a great note. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good note. Um, so yeah, I, 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 you know, if you ever get a chance to look at the book, go check it out, or go listen to the narration. I'd be kind of interested to see how it how it sounds as an audio in audio format. So yeah. And All this, right, we want uh, to Brotherhood. Yeah, this leads kind of into Brotherhood, also by Ariel uh, Ariel Lawrence. For sure, for sure. Um, yeah, this is the only story that's actually from Yasuo's perspective. It was actually, yeah. it, I think that's part of why it was my favorite story of everything <laughs> we're going to go over. Um, he's on the road to Wele. Uh, he, but he hears a child crying and he can, off the side of the road and he comes over to see what's going on. And it's a, a young boy who has gotten a kite stuck in the tree. And it is, so the young boy's name is Job, Joab. Yeah, I, I wasn't sure if we were doing anything with that A that's in there. <laughs> we're yeah, from Massachusetts. We're used to just ignoring we letters. We skip so many letters. We don't say that shit. His name's J. <laughs> <laughs> no, you just add different letters. It's like Joy <laughs> <laughs> Um 
<laughs> Big Jim, we'll call him. Big Jim. Big Jim. Uh, yeah, uh, little Jim is 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 upset because it's Jim. it is his older brother's kite that he was told to not fuck with, and did fuck with, and got it stuck in a tree. Um, and he's tried climbing the tree, and he can't climb up and get it. He's tried. Uh, I guess his mother, I think, is like a plant weaver. And he's tried doing his own little plant weaving, but it's like a tiny little sapling and it's never going to get there. Um, he just doesn't know what to do. And Yasuo is like, yeah, you know, brothers are like this. And he kind of, he helps him out. And when he does the wind technique to knock the kite out of the tree, Joab, you know, immediately is like, oh, you're Yasuo, the, um, the unforgiven. I, this is the only thing though, is that like in that previous story, I, I should have mentioned that also uh, Jing recognized, knew that Yasuo had been exonerated. Um, so, like I said, word is spreading that he's actually not guilty anymore. Um, uh, but regardless, Yasuo is sort of like, ah, I didn't commit the crime, but still, Job is a little, a little unsure. And then his older brother, Teo, T O, T E O. What do you, what do yeah. y'all think? I would, I would say Te- uh, t- I like t- Teo. T- t- Teo, maybe. Teo? Yeah. We'll I would assume, I would assume like I would assume there's to be an accent there for that, but that's just the French in me. Yeah, we'll go with Teo. Um, so the Joab's older brother Teo shows up, and, and Teo showed up to his credit with with the tools to get a kite out of a tree because he knew <laughs> he knew that his little brother was going to fuck with things even when told not to. And um, uh, Job tries to ask Teo, "Hey, can?" my new friend, this spooky wind sword guy, come have dinner with us. Uh, and and Teo, Teo, Teo says no. He is, um, and they have a word for it. I it's I looked it up. Ziri? I don't remember. It's like, or Ziri? Yeah. It's, yeah Ziri, something like that. Ziri? Ziri, yeah. <laughs> Ziri. Uh, but it means, like, something that is unwanted or is, like, kind of brought, like, like a pest almost like something that's brought about through misfortune. Right. That for the record, kind of, well, I was going to say, if you weren't ahead. able to find anything, um, Ionia De, uh, and Yasuo and Karma for the record, both speak ancient Ionian. Um, so oh, really? a lot of the words that we see here are not like, um, you know, words from our language that are being used by Ionia. They are unique words that are all Ionian. Yeah. Um, and, and Yasuo sort of accepts that that's still how he was regarded and kind of just like, well, you better listen to your older brother because brothers know best. Um, and he kind of just goes brother on down the road. <laughs> uh, now, how far does he get away from the child? <laughs> Is it I sword length guess away? it's a blade length. It's, it's <laughs> three <laughs> sword lengths. Three sword lengths. <laughs> It's three. <laughs> right? How, how many sword lengths before it gets unwieldy to use swords? Do they have, like, a bigger measurement that they use once they get past that? Right. <laughs> I love that. Man. But yeah, uh, I, I liked this. I like this one. I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't want to cut you off. I was just going to say, like, we're in Yasuo's head. I like a lot because he's, he's doing all this and he's hearing Yone's voice in his head. Not, like, literally, but just sort of the things that Yone would say about these these little moments and and it connected me the most with sort of his feelings of i don't know regret especially <coughs> when it came to killing yone oh my god something like <laughs> <laughs> mark just let up a joy no i'm scared <laughs> <coughs> excuse me <laughs> you go yeah uh, <laughs> wash it down with wine you're good <laughs> I was just going to say, it really makes it, it really makes sense why Yone starts the, so the cinematic pretty much directly follows this, I feel like. It makes sense why he starts that cinematic kind of smashed. Like, this was pretty brutal. (laughs) Mm. Yeah, I I think it's a smart construction of the story. Oh my god, something's happening to me. I don't know what's going on. (laughs) To have him interact with little baby brothers because it's, you know, it's obviously so personal to him. (laughs) Bring so much drama to your thoughts. <laughs> We're gonna pass it on to Tony. <laughs> what do you think? Uh, I, the, I mean, yeah, the whole thing is he thought of Yone the whole time. So the whole brothers know best thing. Yeah, that had to hit him hard after he, he knows his brother's alive, but to to have to kill him and then see that 
the older brother doesn't want him to come because he's Ziri or however you say that word. Uh, <laughs> it, it's got to hurt him. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty rude. Like, exactly. Man, I've been exonerated. Can I catch a fucking uh, break, man? I guess he did kill all I those mean, other people, though. <laughs> Yeah, I got exonerated for the one crime, and no one's ever thought to take me in for the other crimes. Can I just catch a break, yeah. man? <laughs> oh. oh, man. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, this does lead directly into uh, Kin of the Stained Blade, which I'll kind of hop into before the Ruined King, because Kin of the Stained Blade leads directly into the Ruined King. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this is this is uh, the cinematic where we get um, it kind of jumps between flashbacks of modern day um, Yasuo in Waylay at the Spirit Blossom Festival, which apparently this is the first time the Spirit Blossoms have come back in quite some time since the Noxian um, invasion. Um, and we're kind of getting flashbacks to Yasuo's past where he, um, you know, he had to fight Yone and ended up having to kill Yone. Uh, so we see all the all the guilt there, and he knows he's not going to make it to the temple or the top of the mountain in time. So an old man's like, "Oh, you know, uh, why don't you? Yeah, I mean, my temple might work. It's fine. Come, come with me." So you know he does, and the old man tells him to to let it let it all go. You know, let the waters cleanse you of your guilt, cleanse you of the, the all the bad, and then. He's like, you know what? Maybe you should. Maybe you should have a cup of tea. It might help you. Um, you know, might, might might help you with the spirits or whatever. And he says it will connect. It will connect our two realms or whatever. I think yeah. that's what he says. Yeah. And you, you know, yeah. So it's like, oh, drink. <laughs> a drink rarely gets me out of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, now give me that open container, stranger. Yeah. So he does drink it anyway. <laughs> um, and. Uh, Spoiler alert! Turns out the old guy's a fucking demon. <gasps> he's an he's an Azakana, and uh, he uh, kind of he's gonna do something to Yasuo. We don't know exactly what, but in the meantime, he seems to have just kind <laughs> of uh, not taken control of Yasuo, but kind of I guess beguiled. I would say maybe a bit Yasuo. Um, yeah. And Yone shows up, and his whole thing is fucking fighting Azakana. So he's like, oh, I'm going to kill that guy. And Yasuo's like, I'm not going to let you. <laughs> and so they fight a little bit, but then Yone has a, a you know, a, a quote. Um, you know, they mention honor. In one of the flashback scenes, mm. you know, they're fighting, and they're fighting in a in a, a battleground that's just littered with bodies. Um, and Yasuo was like, this is what your honor did, Yasuo. Your honor litters the ground. And he's like, better than living without it. And I forget exactly what the Azakana said. Something <laughs> about honor, too. And then Yone was like, better than living without it. And Yasuo was like, <gasps> Yo, shit! <laughs> <laughs> and, uh... So the two of them fight together to beat this Azakana, and then there's there's one bit um, in this that I'm I'm not 100 percent because we haven't gotten to Yone yet. Um, it seems like Yone has like a little thing on his belt that can like trap Azakana or like suck up Azakana or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. Now this Azakana obviously seems familiar with Yone. He immediately calls him Slayer the second he mm-hmm. he pops up, so he he knows all about Yone shtick. And he does say, like, go ahead, like, kill me. As long as Yasuo here's alive, I'm just gonna come back anyway, so it doesn't really fucking matter. And I'm curious if the the demon sucking thing actually prevents him from coming back or not. Or whether it, this Azakan is always kind of gonna be on his shoulder. Yeah. It kinda it reads to me like the cause he takes like it's like a mask that he kinda of onto his, his belt and I, I it reads like yeah, he got yeah, I don't know what, what uh, noise it makes. Um, like, yeah, he's collected something that will, like, is a permanent thing. So I guess we'll see when we get to Yone very soon. Yeah, Swo does have a line here that says, I'm done running um, moments before getting on a boat to Bilgewater. Yeah. Um, 
This is he says that, he says I'm done running a lot right before going somewhere. That's else. the thing. He throws them off. Now never let him know your next move. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. And this this c- cinematic is essentially kind of like a semi conclusion to Yone and Yasuo's story together. Um, it's the beginning of Yasuo's part in Ruined King, where he does finally finally wrap up the that, the, the storyline that's what i was gonna say is i feel like this was a little bit of a stumbling block um where it's like he he, he does say literally i'm through running and then he kind of has to actually resolve his issues with yone later on in a video another video game um <laughs> so i don't know you know it's like uh but it's okay it's okay it's not too bad and yeah he leaves with ari at the end of the uh the thing is kind of yeah the teaser He's going to going build, to build water. water. <laughs> and Ari's going to build water too. We don't know why yet. Mm. Mm. We'll find out right now. Sure. Uh, so Yasuo's in Ruined King. So Yasuo and Ari arrive in Bilgewater. Uh, Yasuo has agreed to be Ari's bodyguard. Um, but, you know, he's been asking her a lot of questions about herself. She's been super secretive. He's kind of bummed about it. Um, one night, though, they're, they're kind of getting close. One night, Ari sneaks away. Uh, she's worried she's been getting too close, and, you know, she's had bad experiences before accidentally draining loved ones. <laughs> so she's like, I don't want to accidentally kill this dude, so I'm going to sneak away while he's sleeping. Um, he follows her because his job is his bodyguard, and he has a a spotted past with failing as being a bodyguard. <laughs> so he's like, not, not this time. Not again. Yeah. <laughs> Later in the game, the group's trying to catch up with Viego, and Yasuo ends up channeling the power of the wind to speed their boat up. But um, so they do end up catching him, but Viego shipwrecks them on Wind Drake Island. Mm-hmm. Now on this island, Yasuo senses something familiar in the wind and goes out to explore. So uh, he tells Ari about his past and how he was forced to kill his brother, and she empathizes and reveals how she accidentally killed her lover. Um, so while they're waiting for the ship to be repaired, the group decides to investigate the mysterious wind, and they discover that the wind magic is more powerful in the island. And the source of this mysterious wind was uh, the island drawing on Yasuo's regret. He's confronted by shadows of his brother and former master. And after facing them, he accepts his mistakes of his past and he can look to his future. Um, you know, kind of a, a maybe I finally do forgive myself. Um, yeah. And then at the very end of Ruined King, he says he's going to Noxus for some unfinished business. In Noxus? Which I assume is just rescuing Riven, if I had to guess. Yeah. Oh, yeah. duh. I forgot she was fucking there, dude. Although it does also... It's, I, I, this is me just reading the wiki. I didn't like go back through the, to the game or anything like that. Um, doesn't he say he's going to help Braum get to the Freljord first, right? Like, that's his first stop, is to help Braum get back there with his, his cure or whatever? Oh, I missed that, maybe. It's Like I said, this is the wiki, so I'm just trusting them. Um, They're probably right. Yeah, yeah, they, they tend they're to be usually good, good about this. these things. Yeah, mm. yeah. I like. I really like the the end point of him uh, going to go do something with Riven in Noxus. I think that's a really smart place for him to kind of head towards. You know, give him some purpose. I like. I like them together. I don't know. I think it, it's a, it's a nice kind of like. I don't know. It feels kind of like it's kind of coming, coming circle that like he's going to go help her now. You know what I mean? Yeah, because, like, his whole thing is being unforgiven, and he's finally made peace. Let's, like, maybe I can forgive myself. And he knows that Riven's in the same boat. Like, Riven accidentally killed it. Like, Riven, um, I mean, even in the court where the whole thing was an accident, she's just like, no, it was me. It was my fault. I'm sorry. I Mm -hmm. fucking did this. So, like, he can see that she carries the same weight that he does. So, yeah, I like like him potentially uh, mentoring her through forgiving herself yeah i think so and so i I don't know if you're going to talk about it but the awakened cinematic is like the 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 last stop that i think we need to discuss and i think it raises some interesting questions right yeah we've been told that awaken is indeed like some sort of future canon right Mm -hmm. like something that may happen in the second noxian invasion and we know that yasuo was there and we know that riven is still in noxus right 
Now, well, the no, thing I'll, is, I'll pause. I'll pause. This is after. So the Ruined King also leads directly into Sentinels of Light, which gets Riven out of Noxus almost oh, immediately. Oh, fuck. Oh, <laughs> fuck me. Okay. No, I refuse to acknowledge that as, as real because my idea is way better. Okay. <laughs> All right. Hit, hit me with it. Hit me with it. <laughs> okay. I, this was the idea I had. Do you remember we were talking about Sendra, right? And I really like the idea of Riot puts out, it's, 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 it's 2025. Riot puts out a new cinematic that picks up immediately where Awaken leaves off. And it seems like the Ionians are mounting a cool ass defense when giant storm clouds come storming in and a giant temple, kind of like the UFOs in Independence Day, comes tearing through the clouds and there's Syndra blasting them all with, with balls of power, right? Smash cut to Riven in the Noxian arena. You know, Draven and her are fighting and she turns and gives some signal and a bunch of people in the crowd sh- throw off their cloaks and they've all got cool Ionian Noxian <gasps> mixes of armor and weapons. And who comes bursting through the arena walls, but Alistar and Rel cause Riven and Yasuo have teamed up to lead. She's going to lead a revolution in Noxus while the Ionians mount their defense. And it all happens that way. That's why she's still in Noxus. I mean, that's cool and all, but have you considered that Olaf may just release gases from every orifice? So, that is true. Every orifice. That does solve all the world's problems. <laughs> so. I love I it. forgot. I fucking forgot about Rise of the Centaurs, man. That sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Because I, like, I was like, damn, it's a real shame that they kind of ended up in these two separate points. But there's a lot of open space you could play with. And I really like the idea that they had met up had come to some sort of agreement and it formed some sort of plan. Like maybe they're there and they realize Noxus is going to invade again. What are we going to do? Right. I'll go back and help you stay here and you lead, you know, this new girl who I found named Rel and she's got a cool Minotaur and you guys <laughs> lead a, 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 some sort of revolution inside Noxus itself. Right. I don't know. It's be I very like that cool. Idea. Be cool. I like- Yasuo is just going to be super fucking bummed when he gets to Noxus. He's like, where's Ruby at? <laughs> we're gonna save her oh some random fucking people that were never tied to her story came in and saved her got her out of the arenas which was like her biggest thing in her lore they were just like ah she's out now yeah, yeah. anyway now I forgot what I was gonna say <laughs> what were we talking about before that the Alistar and, 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 and before and, is it before that just where no 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 um, is it mm, I it's don't gone. know uh, it's, it's gone okay, I'm sorry Oh I'm sorry. God. It's much like the potential of the, the Yasuo Riven story. Is it about the Ruin King where he like had, had gone to Yasuo Island and then fought Yone? And, no, and no, no, no. It was like 30 <laughs> seconds before I said something to John. Mm. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's okay. Don't look at me like that. It's the only way I know how to look. <laughs> uh, the Yasuo now- Yone fight in Ruin King is pretty fun, I will say. It's a pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, it's pretty good because you you fight with a party the whole game, and this is the, like one of the few times where it's just him and it's just Yone, and it's a it's a fun little fight. So I feel like every good RPG needs one of those, you know? Sure. Yeah. It's like Final Fantasy VII. You get the like Dine versus Barrett fight. All of those have like the the most emotional weight too, you know? Because yeah, it's not about the fight; it's about what's going on with the characters, right? Yeah. yeah. I remember what I was gonna say. Oh, nice! Hit me. <laughs> I was gonna say I like Ionia as a uh oh my god what's that word <laughs> opponent i like iodia as an opponent for noxus over demacia i feel like demacia like yeah demacia being like the big rival is not as interesting to me mm-hmm. you know what i mean i feel yeah. like it always used to be about noxus versus demacia but noxus and ionia the way that they approach the world is truly like opposite whereas in demacia and noxus it's not Honestly, I feel like with the worldview that Demacia has, Demacia's enemy would also be Ionia. That's fair. <laughs> yeah, they, that's yeah, very fair. Honestly. World verse Ionia. Yeah. Right. Oh, no. Probably you would. <laughs> no, they got they, their own thing. They just want to fucking do their own thing over there. Just leave them alone. Really? Just leave them alone. <laughs> They're hanging out. People living peacefully? Not on my fucking watch. <laughs> <laughs> Build a boat. Let's get over there. Yeah. No, I think you're totally right. Yeah. Uh, uh, Anywho. Uh, now, he's also mentioned in Bloodline, um, so where it's just mentioned that since leaving Yasuo and Ionia, Talia has tried to keep to herself, always on the move, never staying in any place longer than necessary. Uh, it's also mentioned in the Stoneweaver, obviously, which is the Talia bio. Um, 
where it said it was in Ionia that she finally discovered her teacher, a man whose blade harnessed the wind itself, someone who understood the elements and the need for balance. Um, and then, obviously, he's also in The Forgotten, which is, or The Unforgotten, which is the Aswo story, but Yone's side. And yes, the brothers are The Unforgiven and The Unforgotten. <laughs> I like um, it. Now, in terms of other cinematics here, which, Did let he me beat her tell you... Hold on, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 cinematics. I think he did beat her out. He beat out Katarina. Yasuo wow. is in the most cinematics of any yeah. League of Legends champion. So, uh, I believe yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, first of all, we mentioned Awaken, um, which is kind of the second uh, Noxian Ionian war. In this cinematic, Yasuo tornadoes a literal army of people. Um, compared to everyone else in this fight, he really seems OP as hell. Um, <laughs> but it is canon, so I mean, he's just that strong. Mm. Uh, he's also in The Path, an Ionian myth, a little bit. This is more mm. of a Yone cinematic. Um, Yone's in the afterlife, and Ari's escorting him to the good place. But Thresh tempts him to the bad place instead, um, where he sees his final fight against Yasuo, sees all the slain people he failed to save, he gets all mad, and then the demon comes out. And he's got to fight the demon. And then he becomes what? kind of a demon. Oh. But also mm -hmm. a demon hunter. We'll get to it. It's like yeah. Angel from Buffy. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Um, now we've got uh, Kingdom, which is the trailer for the Ruined King, which basically highlights Ari and Yasuo fighting another Azakana. Uh, maybe it's Yasuo's again. Maybe not. Who knows? Uh, mm -hmm. You know? Um, but they're fighting some Azakana here. Um, then we've got Still Here, where Yasuo's portion is a hypothetical future where he's lost his way. He's essentially lost his will to fight, and he's given up the sword right up until this village gets attacked, that is. Um, though we also definitely see him die, because he mm -hmm. seems to accept Kindred's arrow at the end of that section. So, uh, that's the end of old man Yasuo. R.I.P. Yeah. I'm not a fan of that word, hypothetical, that you used. <laughs> Yes, this is this is kind of one of those Soraka visions, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> but no yeah. one got turned into a werewolf. No one got turned into a werewolf that we saw. You don't know that. There's a lot of wolves in the... There, there was a wolf in the cinematic. We don't know where it came from. <laughs> uh, then we've got The Climb, which opens with Yasuo playing the flute while arrows drop all around him. Uh, finally, he turns and wind walls a massive wall of arrows dropping. It's kind of lucky, honestly, that none of the earlier arrows hit because he doesn't seem the least bit worried about them. Uh, now we've got uh, some uh, a few animated ones, too. We've got uh, A New Journey, which is inspired by the true story of Michelle, a university student and League of Legends player who joined a team and joined the fight. Uh, she's a Yasuo main in the cinematic, and she leads her team to victory. Nice. Uh, then we've got Unstoppable, which is inspired by the true story of Double Lift, the Team Liquid ADC back in the day, um, and five-time North American LCS champion. Uh, <laughs> in one scene, he ults the Yasuo, who obviously clearly has his wind wall down as Jinx, and kills him. <laughs> then we've got, speaking of Jinx, You Really Got Me, <laughs> which is a uh, Wild Drift cinematic. So Jinx is gathering people for her team for Wild Drift. Uh, when she finds Yasuo, he's in a tea house, single-handedly defeating just a ton of enemies while drinking his tea and fighting with his teaspoon while his sword just sits on the table. Um, when Jinx comes and blows the wall down, it breaks his tea glass. <gasps> Makes him mad. So he grabs his sword and dives after her, but she's already opened a portal to the rift that he falls into instead. Um, now, on this actual fight, he faces off against Zed, mm -hmm. who almost gets the drop on him with a shadow clone. But then Yasuo's kind of like, oh, oh all right, Do uh, downloaded. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> and then downloaded. later in the cinematic, <laughs> he windwalls the shadow clone shurikens like, ah, you thought. Then we've got Warriors, the original one. The Imagine Dragons one. Uh, Yasuo's in the clouds when all the light thingies are flying around. Sick. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if you like that, you're going to love this. He's also in Ignite. <laughs> 
Uh, in the last few seconds, there's uh, about half of a tiny pop cap Yasuo. In this. Wow, Great. John. I don't know if we could say he actually beat out Katarina in this case. No, we can, because I feel like she also, also specifically is in Ignite mm, yeah. as a pop cap. Okay. <laughs> uh, and he's also in Rise, actually in it, uh, where Ambitions, Kazakhs fights Perks's Yasuo in the epic first battle of the video, which was fucking cool as hell, really set the tone for that music video, which was so good. Mm-hmm. Whew. Those are the, those are the cinematics. That's, that's, that's canon Yasuo, you know? Whew. That's a lot of canon Yasuo. That's a lot of canon Yasuo. Is Yasuo the best constructed character in League of Legends? Have we have we discovered it? Oh, maybe. <laughs> Honestly, all of his stuff, I I really like. I, I, I kind of I just like the whole setup. I don't know the, his whole everyone hating him and then ostracizing him, accusing him of murder, and then his decision to kill people instead of running away. It's like a choice he makes. So there is like. He's not a purely good guy, obviously. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's an archetype. Like it's it he's yeah. strictly an archetype, but it's an archetype yeah. that I really like. Mm-hmm. Like the whole like drunken drunken roaming Ronin. Ronin. Yeah. yeah. It's like I love it. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. He um he he's like he does E but like better and stuff, you know, kind of right. Yes. Like he They really distilled down the the roaming I- Ionian tragic swordsman into like it's like a fine like a powder and that's Yasuo <laughs> right there you know what I mean There's so, the amount of freaking bios I've read that it's like we wanted to fight Noxus but my people wouldn't let me it was a lot it was like every yeah. Ionian <laughs> right it's a lot of Ionians mm. yep I guess it's kind of also him he never actually yeah. did end up fighting him no he just that's true he almost yeah. did once <laughs> <laughs> yeah can we also talk about how even injured how Riven beat him back <laughs> to Master Suma from that fight? <laughs> she was in that fight. <laughs> Obviously, like he got there in the aftermath, of course, but he was also healthy as hell and mm. real great at the wind technique, so you know he was getting there fast and getting back fast. How the fuck did Riven beat him back <laughs> to Master Suma? <laughs> that is true. There were no minions. He he had nothing to dash through, right? Like <laughs> he kept dropping wards and being like, "Fuck, it doesn't work like this." <laughs> I was thinking about that timeline wise. I'm like, how? That was a lot to happen while he was away, right? It was tight at the scene of the mm-hmm. crime that the killer just was. Uh, now he has a few quotes here. Not a lot, but uh, would you? No, I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> Which is uh, a quote he has to Master Yi in response to, Would you pass me that potion? <laughs> uh, he has another quote to Master Yi. Man, he fucking dogs on Master he Yi. He really dogs on Master uh, Yi. Nice sword boots? <laughs> Which is uh, probably a reference to a uh, pro as heck guide to Master Yi, if you want to look up that old school YouTube video. I Did was he... wondering what that was like referencing. Did he... Didn't the old Master Yi also have actual swords on his feet? Right? Yeah. Like, yeah. You're, that's what the he's old model. Fun yeah. Of. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then he's got uh, ninjas. I hate those guys. <laughs> which is uh, similar to Ezreal's Noxians. I hate those guys. Which is a reference, you know, to Indiana Jones. Um, and also a reference to, you know, Samurai's. Hatred of ninjas. Mm. It's multi-layered. <laughs> yeah, works on so many levels. Y'all want to hear about some AUs? Kind yeah. of, like, I guess. <laughs> kind of, I suppose. Don't, don't worry, know. there's only like one of them. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, high noon. Gunslingers and lawmen ride beneath the merciless sun of the high frontier, chasing survival and salvation in equal measure. Heaven is rubble, hell is empty, and all the devils are here. This is High Noon Yasuo, the mysterious and reluctant sheriff of a two-street town. Yasuo is in self-imposed exile after being accused of murder in the Eastern Territories. Even so, he has driven off entire bandit gangs, as well as many of the desert's deadliest threats, saving hundreds of lives along the way. 
Okay. Yeah. Nice. Yasuo, but cowboy. I love how often people are wearing bullets in things like this. When they just clearly like, don't have a gun. use bullets. Yeah, it's not like I love graves. It. He doesn't have a sword gun, does he? He doesn't have a... Is his gun not also a sword in this one? Oh, it does kind of look or like Or sword, it, also yeah. a gun. Oh, yeah. He's got one of those 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 classic Final Fantasy VIII sword guns. Yeah. I don't know who the first one to do it was, but I'm going to credit Final Fantasy VIII. Yeah, we'll sure. go with it. Might be. Uh, next up, we got Project. Among the mega structures and packed streets of a future controlled by global corporations, a shadow war rages between rebellious augmented humans and newly empowered artificial beings. The winners will shape the course of history, and the losers will be forced to evolve. This is Project Yasuo. Yasuo returned from advanced combat only to be accused of a crime he did not commit. Knowing that Project's corporate leadership was somehow involved, Yasuo fights with the genetic rebels, cutting away the lies of technology with his plasma-coated blade. Um, and there's a cinematic here, Overdrive, that uh, he's mentioned in. You know, you see his name on a computer, so that's he's in it. Pretty cool. Nice. And uh, fun facts on this one, compared to all of the Project skins, Project Yasuo is the only one who does not possess robotic features on his actual face when he gets unmasked, uh, nor does he retain his robotic voice filter underneath it. Uh, Project Yasuo is also the only Project skin out of the non-legendary skins to have more than one extra set of animation changes. Uh, He has both different basic attack animations and recall animations while all of his other skins uh, only have the the new recall animation Hmm. so you know Hmm. bang for your buck on that one (laughs) (laughs) John trying to sell you project Yasuo skins (laughs) working on commission (laughs) and we got uh, Moons of Ionia Blood Moon An ancient cult seeking irresistible power surfaces on Knights of the Blood Moon to perform profane esoteric rites, merging their flesh with demonic spirits and becoming one with an ever greater darkness. This one's Blood Moon Yasuo. The ceremonial executioner of the Blood Moon cult, Yasuo's blade is inhabited by an insidious, bloodthirsty demon whose hunger for death can never be satisfied. This suits Yasuo well, for he is possessed of an inner darkness even deeper than the creature whispering at his side. Which, I'm going to be honest, sounds a lot just like Yasuo, right? (laughs) (laughs) Just just, like, can't stop killing that guy. I just like that he's not accused of a crime he didn't commit. Right? That's fair. (laughs) They really deviated that time. Right. (laughs) Hired for a crime. He definitely committed. Right. (laughs) And we got uh, versus Nightbringer versus Dawnbringer. Chaos and darkness reign through deities of night, bringing change to a static world locked in conflict with the forces of dawn. Order and light reign through deities of dawn, bringing structure to a nascent world locked in conflict with the forces of night. This is Nightbringer Yasuo. Born from festering echoes at the dawn of creation, Yasuo is the hellish embodiment of chaos in the cosmos. Fated to clash against the Dawnbringer for all time, he awaits a day when his darkness will finally cleave away her light. Um, and for the record, the, the light version of this is Riven. Uh, now there's a comic here, Unto Darkness, Unto Light, that explains the complicated relationship between Yasuo and Riven. They're basically forever in combat, and as we see, kind of, there's multiple versions of this comic, one where light wins and one where dark wins. And what we kind of see is there's an implication that um, whoever, like, even if one is victorious over the other in the end, they end up taking on the attribute of the person they defeated, and then the other one is reborn as them. Um, Uh, So, you know, Mm. if Riven kills Yasuo, she's like, ah, what have I become? And she becomes the darkness, and he's reborn as the light. So, you know, light and chaos will continue fighting forever. Okay. I gotcha. Yeah. Uh, And fun fact on this one, Nightbringer Soraka is a divine being of chaos born from the aftermath of the battle between Dawnbringer Riven and Nightbringer Yasuo. And a blade resembling Nightbringer Yasuo's can be seen after she casts Starcall with the skin. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. And also God King Garen and God King Darius are the distant and final descendants of Riven and Yasuo, respectively. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. 
Uh, then we got Odyssey. From the heavily urbanized core worlds to the outermost edge of the galaxy, adventure awaits! The great Damaxian Empire has laid claim to it's almost... It's always funny. Uh, <laughs> uh, they've laid claim to almost every inhabited system, ignoring the objections of the ancient Templar Order and the criminal syndicate alike, in pursuit of the wondrous bounty of Aura. This mysterious golden essence drawn from the vast, majestic creatures that patrol the stars is the lifeblood of all civilizations, but also promises untold power to those who can wield it for themselves. This is Odyssey Yasuo. Yasuo never wanted to be a space pirate until he was framed for her his brother's murder <laughs> and he had to flee his life of relative luxury. Now, on the run from a dozen different military and paramilitary factions, he's putting together an eccentric crew to make a new life among the stars. You thought you were done with him being framed. I thought, yeah. Not. Never, At least he was framed in this done. one. I like that. Yes. A little different. Uh, <laughs> uh, now, there's a cinematic for this, Welcome Aboard, which is basically a recruitment video that Jinx put together for the Morning Star, which is the ship that they have. Uh, when we meet Yasuo, he's reading a book. The Storm and the Saber by Brian Francis Sword, which is a uh, romantic literature involving the characters Rogue Admiral Garen and Bilgewater Katarina. Uh, Jinx throws a training dummy at him and he slices it into pieces without taking his eyes off the page. Um, and he takes part unenthusiastically in karaoke and board games with Malphite and Jinx, so, you know, team building activities. <laughs> and uh, when Jinx is recording the video, in the middle of space combat, he takes the camera and shoves it out the garbage chute. My. Good stuff. Good, Good stuff. stuff. Uh, now, um, fun fact. The word Morningstar was coined by whoever owned the ship before Yasuo did. He stole it. Uh, and Yasuo's shoulder lizard was stolen from a maximum security nature preserve. Um, and in an alternate version of Yone... Um, the, the Odyssey version. Uh, Yasuo's brother was killed by Odyssey Kane after the events of the lore when helping Sona escape. Okay, interesting. Yeah. All right. Then we've got Arcade Battle Bosses. Deep within Arcadia's servers lies a sinister series of glitches known to all gamers as the Battle Bosses. Their corrupted code has brought them newfound freedom, but also new challengers. To complete their deletion of the arcade world, many of the bosses have agreed to put aside their differences. Until it's inconvenient. Mm -hmm. This is Battle Boss Yasuo. One-time protagonist of the 1979 cult classic Hasagi, <laughs> Yasuo was infected with Vagar's malignant code after the Battle Boss takeover of Arcadia. He maintains his impossibly complex gameplay patterns and high damage attacks, but now fights for the forces of evil. Ooh. Mm. That's uh, fun. There, yeah. Yeah, that is fun. He's in a cinematic for this, too, called Ultra Combo, which is a super badass animated, animated cinematic set to one of the coolest fucking songs Riot's ever done. What is it? The, it's, it's the one I literally open my yeah, stream yeah. with every week oh really mm -hmm. yeah i love it so I know much you've, i you've, always you've watch your streams but i can't remember what the song is <laughs> do you know what it's called uh it's probably just called ultra combo, like ultra combo. you gonna pull it up and play it no i was gonna listen to it after but i wasn't gonna remember. oh you should play a snippet just okay. so people fucking know how cool it is Okay, I remember this one. <laughs> I can't really to my shitty phone, and I could just put a clip in there later. Am I gonna? No, nope. probably not. But. Uh, now we got Riot Records True Damage. What is True Damage? Man, True Damage is the future. It's a collective of the best artists from around the world coming together with the best collaboration to make the best hip-hop music. We're five steps ahead of the game, and everyone else has to has gotta catch up Ooh. the quote from echo uh, and this is true damage yasuo 
As, enigma as enigmatic as he is skilled, Yasuo is the veteran producer all others turn to for inspiration. His beats transcend genre, painting whole universes with wild textures of sound. Notoriously selective about his collaborations, Yasuo sees True Damage as his platform to revolutionize how society experiences music. Okay. Which, I mean, you know, Giants was good, but that seems... I was going to say... Uh, that's, that's a little... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, now, there's a prestige version of this, uh, but unfortunately, since it's kind of storyline uh, skin, it, you don't get the cool walkway version. Mm, but damn. Uh, After the global success of Giants, reclusive producer extraordinaire Yasuo was inundated with requests. From record deals to clothing sponsorships, he turned down one after another, preferring to stay out of the limelight to focus on the simple joys of making beats. However, a bathing ape somehow managed to secure his attention. And I have a little note here because I looked it up for y'all. Um, a bathing ape is a Japanese fashion brand who collaborated with this skin release. Oh! oh okay, that's thank you. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Now donning golden threads to match his musical brilliance, Yasuo holds the world's ears at attention, with fans and critics alike waiting to hear his next revolutionary track. Uh, and there's a few cinematics for this. Uh, we got Breakout first, which is the teaser for Giants, where Yasuo stabs his mixing table and then like pulls his sword around to make the music change. Like he's like controlling a gear shift in a fucking car or something. <laughs> That's how it works, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Uh, I'm no DJ, but I guess that's how it works. <laughs> uh, and then we've got Giants, where Yasuo's DJing, DJing the whole song in like a super badass tunnel with a massive fan at the end of it. Uh, in the middle of the song, he whips his sword out, non-sexual, and changes the direction of the fan, triggering the beat change for Echo. Mm. It's pretty cool. Uh, and he's also in the comic Harmonies. Um, where he is the DJ, so he's also running the recording booth for KDA and doing some mixing for him, so he's kind of like the, the person in the booth while they're all recording their music. Oh, okay. Uh, and he's also in Sharp, the magazine about KDA. Yasuo, yeah, so in fact, gets a whole spread about his collaboration with A Bathing Ape. Uh, apparently, they sold a sling, a sling bag, windbreaker, shoes, and cargo pants, IRL. Um... And then, honestly, they look pretty cool. I would, nice. if they weren't, I'm sure, absurdly expensive. Yeah, because yeah, it's yeah. like a brand name shit. Like, I wear that shit. That's cool. <laughs> um, fun fact on this one. On their flight to Paris, Yasuo is seen reading Star Guardians Volume 2, featuring Star Guardian Ari. And he's also wearing the varsity jacket. Mm. Nice. Um. I don't know if I left a note for this anywhere, but he's also um, in in the uh, in his appearance in the comic um, melodies. He's also reading a Battle Academia, oh, um, nice. a comic with Ezreal on the cover. So he's he's really into that shit. Every, every AU, he's just he's he's killing it. <laughs> Big reader, yeah. So uh, next we've got Spirit Blossom. The Spirit Blossom Festival is an ancient and celebrated time in Ionia when the door to the spirit world is opened. The dead return to their loved ones, and spirits of all manner turn their eyes towards the living. From the benevolent Kanmei to the obsessive Akana, their stories play out again and again like shadows on a paper lantern. And this is Spirit Blossom Yasuo. Long ago, two brothers fought a bitter war across Ionia. Yasuo, the younger brother, was a warlord renowned for his roguish demeanor until he was accused of crimes against the country and took up arms to defend himself. Both were fated to fall in their final duel. A lesson, perhaps, in pride and hubris. Uh, so yeah, that's one of the changes in the Seiyu. Yasuo didn't win the duel, they killed each other. Mm. Oh. Um... And uh, there's a level up for this one because it has a uh, Legends of Runeterra uh, skin here. Brother, may the wind carry my request to you. I ask for your understanding and only your understanding because I know I may never ask for your forgiveness. May the wind blow us all toward redemption. 
Uh, and then there's a game for this one. It was the in-game um, event, uh, Spirit Bonds. Mm. Um, so the player comes across Yasuo killing a demon. He tells the player to be careful because, you know, there's demons out here. Look out. <laughs> uh, next time they meet, he hears Yasuo playing music. Mm-hmm. So uh, Yasuo introduces himself as the Spirit of Heroism. Um, he mourns not being a musician because, you know, he enjoys sword play, but if he was a musician, maybe Yone would have... No, I dare not say it. <laughs> uh, he notices the Traveler doesn't have the bite marks of Wolf or an arrow wound of Lamb and realizes, hey, it's not too late for you. You could get out of here. Uh, next time they meet, he tells them about Yone and how they used to be super close, but then he started training nonstop, and when Yasuo came of age... Uh, you know, he took to the sword naturally and quickly just got better than Yone, which caused Yone to become resentful of him and train even harder. Um, so while Yasuo preferred to just kind of skip practice and play the flute, uh, Yone was training all the time and it didn't matter. Yasuo was still just fucking better. Um, Rough, dude. Yeah. Uh, they did talk about, you know, when they were kids, Yone used to just write poetry and read poetry, and and Yasuo would play the flute along to the poetry, um, and you know mm. he liked that a lot. But then after he started, after Yone started training, it never happened. Mm. Yeah. Do um, you want to play the flute? <laughs> <laughs> uh, next time they end up meeting, Yasuo tells the player more about the spirit realm. Um, and he also explains how he and Yone ended up killing each other on the field of battle. Um, he ended up following the fox while Yone followed the lantern. Um, and, you know, which is kind of the following Ari versus Yasuo in this case. Ari takes you to, you know, I guess just rest and, um, thresh leads you astray. Mm. <laughs> Arr. Arr. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so they're walking around and then they come across a poem Mm. that talks about basically two brothers and how they fought and killed each other and how, um, you know, you shouldn't hold on to that guilt and, you know, I forgive you and all this stuff. And they realize it was written by Yone, um, which is, uh, you know, essentially forgives Yasuo and it lifts a great burden from Yasuo. Though he is determined to still find his brother so that they can reunite. But, you know, the forgiveness is there. Mm. Yeah. That's how that story ended for them. Uh, next up we have The Ruined King. I don't want You gotta. Sarawa. This is actually an interesting <laughs> one. The harrowing spreads its black mist across Runeterra, corrupting indiscriminately. Some in its presence are swayed to follow the ruined king, believing their goals aligned. But Viego wants only the return of Isolde. He has no allies. The ruined who aid him in halting the sentinels are mere pawns in a broken-hearted lover's game. And this one is Sea Dog Yasuo. Empowered by the Buru during his fight against Viego of Camivore, Yasuo made an unlikely champion for the children of Nagakaboros. His obsession with past events flew in the face of everything they believed in. Yet even the mangiest sea dog has his day, and Yasuo stood against the forces of darkness emerging triumphant. Now this is a cool-ass version of Yasuo that does not happen in The Ruined King. It is kind of speculated that this was based on some content that got cut (laughs) from The Ruined King. Interesting. So there was stuff they cut? Well, The the Ruined King game, not event. Oh my god, I was gonna say, how Mm, bad was the stuff they cut? (laughs) Anyway. Oh, that's a bummer. Interesting. Yeah. Huh. Uh... Next up, we got Four Beasts Dragon Mancers. Majestic dragons dwell in remote places of wild beauty, avoiding mortal affairs outside of rarely bestowing their gifts on only a select few. The Dragon Mancers are those fortunate and powerful enough to have gained the ultimate blessing. Whether they then use that for good or evil is up to them, and anyone strong enough to stop them. And this is Truth Dragon Yasuo. Alone against an army, Yasuo chose to stand and fight. He blocked a narrow pass between two mountains, allowing innocents to escape the bloodshed. 
Wielding the truth of steel as a dance, he felled countless foes, but even he could not hold out forever. The dragon of truth, moved by his swordsmanship, came down from its peak to bless him. And there's a second skin in this AU called Dream Dragon Yasuo. I don't think I've seen either of these before. Mm. Mm. Uh, the Song of Steel grew silent, and Yasuo was the last living soul on the battlefield. Though he imagined he could hear the thankful murmurs of the villagers he'd protected, wounded and dying, Yasuo produced his flute to play a last haunting elegy. The Dragon of Dreams descended from its mountaintop, moved by Yasuo's song, and offered him its power. This guy's just swimming in dragons, say, right? y'all. Can't get enough of him, shit. Does. <laughs> Uh, next up, we got Ink Shadow Uprising. On the outskirts of Rabadon City, a dilapidated temple houses the last hope for Rabadon's people, the Ink Shadow Warriors. Each one sacrifices what is most important to them in order to make a contract with ancient spirits who imbue them with magic tattoos so powerful even the Cabal trembles. They are victims no more. It is time to take back their home. This is Ink Shadow Yasuo. Displaced from his home alongside Master Yi, Yasuo now uses his ink shadow tattoos to ride the wind between Rabadon City and the outskirts, protecting civilians seeking asylum with help from the mysterious Man of Masks. Though he gave up his freedom in exchange for power, he sees the price as penance for being unable to help those who needed it most. And this one has a real prestige skin. Yeah. Hey. Sporting an elevated take on traditional Ionian menswear, coupled with a fearlessly bare set of stunning blackout tattoos, Yasuo's gala look celebrates elegant rebellion, sartorial subversion, and an uprising of unprecedented design. Um, elevated. So. That's, a, that's a nice word right there. Yeah. <laughs> We did so good making this skin, guys. You got some Harvard words in there. <laughs> Sartorial. <laughs> uh, fun fact on this one. Yi, Yasuo, and Yone all come from the same home. Uh, and while each warrior made a pact with a spirit for their tattoos, it's actually unknown who Yasuo, Yone, or Kaisa made their deal with. Uh, now, for Yasuo, his freedom which was to come and go from places in a very literal sense, but also to not anchor himself to anyone or anything else is important. So by giving that up, he has tied his life and his magic to the uprising, to the spirit he contracted to, and the people he now seeks to protect. Mm. Okay. Mm. And finally, Ages of Runeterra, Whew. Other Roads. A feather knight flaps its wings, and halfway across Runeterra, an ocean drake surfaces. Our lives play out, fickle as words on parchment, the paths before us unknown and exciting. What if the road taken instead was the one less traveled? And this is Foreseen Yasuo. Yasuo glimpsed many paths in his dreams. One saw him as an old man, alone, having strayed far from his course. He had given up ambition, family, even love, all to atone for sins he could no longer remember. This vision was not a warning, but a reminder, for Yasuo knew he could always return to his path. He only needed to find it, or let it find him. Okay, I thought they explained what's going on. Does that on answer all arm. your questions? Fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Don't worry. I think I think uh, I'll have to double check. I think I have some fun facts about okay, uh, okay. his arm. Yeah, I was curious. I was curious. All right. Speaking of fun facts, we're there, folks. Holy shit! There's a lot. Don't worry about it. Don't He's worry fun. He's about fun about it. <laughs> uh, Yasuo is voiced by Liam O'Brien in League of Legends, Legends of Runeterra, Kin of the Stained Blade, and Ruined King. Nice. Uh. Early exploration had him wield two swords, mm. though this design would later be revised and used for Yone. Mm -hmm. uh, Yone and Yasuo both studied under the same master and know how to draw power from the wind, but only Yasuo knows the full secrets of the technique. And they're now the only remaining members of the school because Yasuo killed all the other ones. 
Uh, the scar on Yasuo's face was caused by Yone in their duel before his death. Mm. Um, we mentioned this, but the thread he uses to tie his hair up is hand-spun shuriman wool gifted him by Talia when they parted ways. Um, and he's currently going to Noxus to find Riven. Um, Yasuo and Yone are one of seven pairs of sibling champions. Again, not counting Bolivar. Uh, Anivia and mm. Orn, who are a trio and not a pair. <laughs> uh, the flute Yasuo plays in his dance is likely a shakuhachi. Um, mm. And uh, Yasuo is the first champion to have an emote that will orient itself the same um, no matter which direction Yasuo is facing. Um, which is his oh. dancing emote, which will always face the bottom right of the screen, no matter where you're facing. Okay. Akali was the second one to do this. Uh, the melody of his classic dance complements Yone's, so when the two of them use their dance emotes simultaneously, they work together. Aww. That's pretty cool. Mm. Um, for April Fool's Day 2017, a video showcasing a joke rework for Yasuo was posted by the official Riot Games Twitter account. Um, Way of the Wanderer was shown to have Resolve's shield but also provide crowd control immunity, similar to Morgana's Black Shield. Uh, Steel Tempest's third cast was shown to split into three additional whirlwinds in a cone after hitting a champion, similar to Graves' collateral damage. Uh, Windwall was shown to form a pentagon of walls, similar to Thresh's The Box. <laughs> Though interesting note about this, uh, that ended up being essentially used for Samir's Blade Whirl after oh. the <laughs> You fuckers, you got what you thought was a good idea for me. Uh, Sweeping Blade was shown to be able to target wards and champions, uh, or and champion summoned units, like uh, Jarvan's Demacian Standard. Oh, really? Uh, And finally, Last Breath was shown to be able to be recast for a seemingly infinite amount of times while the effect the champion was still airborne. (laughs) (laughs) So it's like a fighting game when you've got like a spam. Just the juggling mesh. Right. Uh, a functional real-life replica of Yasuo Steel Blade was crafted in an episode of U- the YouTube series Man at Arms Reforged. They do a lot of cool weapons there. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think like six or seven league weapons. I think. <laughs> in a survey in uh, 2018, they uh, they asked various questions about um, you know who players' favorite champions were and, and all this shit. Um, so on the statement, one of my favorites, uh, players ranked Yasuo second in China and 56th in NA on <laughs> fair to play against. They ranked him 23rd in China <laughs> and 137th. So we in just NA. can't play against Yasuo. <laughs> Apparently. Oh. Uh, uh, and then. Overall, in gameplay visuals and voice together, they ranked him first in China and 38th in NA. Interesting. Interesting. I want to check these, this whole thing out. We could do like a right? whole episode about this, I feel like. That's true. We probably could. <laughs> uh, as an Easter egg in set four of Team Fight Tactics, Yasuo would flash a Mastery 7 emote if he single-handedly <laughs> defeated the enemy team as the only remaining unit. Uh, that's, which, you know, that's fun. <laughs> Yeah, references the community stereotype of Yasuo players loving to flash their mastery. (laughs) And finally, Yasuo and Karma each speak a different unrelated ancient Ionian language, given the lack of sound correspondences and cognates. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. That comes up up in the Realms of Runeterra story. He's speaking a specific Ionian dialect that... um, Yeah, when he's talking with the Jing or whatever. Hmm. He's, he's, he's well-traveled. Yeah. <laughs> he's been he all roams over. a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was uh, Yasuo. It's been over two hours. Any final thoughts? No. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. He's good. Too much, but good. He's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He does good. Uh, I don't like playing against him. Let's delete him from the game. Yeah. Thank lane. you so much for listening. <laughs> <laughs> North America. 
Number one worst. <laughs> I can't fucking play against it. There's so many champs I can't play against. So, so anyway, that was Yasuo. Thank you so much for listening. We have uh, merch, something we haven't talked about in a while. We keep forgetting that it exists. We have like some shirts and sweatshirts and stuff. Bit.ly slash lorehead merch. Um, maybe we'll get some and uh, you could start seeing it in some of the clips soon. <laughs> yeah, we realized we've never worn it in anything. No, and, you probably know, we're gonna, should. We're going to wear it in some streams so y'all can kind of see it. And mm. we've, we've heard feedback that it's comfortable. Uh, yeah, we'll show it so. off. <laughs> Put it to the yeah. test. If you know a great t-shirt artist, let us know. <laughs> Um, we also have a Twitch, twitch.tv slash Lorehead. John streams on Saturdays. He does TFT and A rooms with viewers. And I'm doing Rift games with, with my friends on Fridays. And then on Tuesdays, it's not going to be Monday. I was hoping it would be. No, Tuesdays, more than likely, um, I'm going to try to do some writing sprints and then playing a game. Lately, it's been it's just been League, but uh, we'll see. I might play something else yeah. another time. For the next few weeks, I'll probably be streaming some, um, oh. I'm thinking maybe some Dave the Diver on Thursdays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He usually has a plan on Thursday, but his friend is leaving him. Hmm. <laughs> For so, a few weeks. So he's got his uh, Thursday nights again. We, um, what do we have? A Discord. Yeah, if you want to find some people to play League with, chat, and what have you, please join the Discord. And we have a Patreon. Thank you so much for all of our patrons. Mm, but a very special thank you to our Madarda tier patrons, King of Hearts and Mr. Dead. If I was your brother and I came back and found a bunch of dead bodies and my dead master, I would give you the benefit of the doubt Aww. that you, my brother, did not murder the master That's who great. you apprenticed to. Beautiful. So, you know, I could I could avoid all of this bloodshed. <laughs> so you're yeah. welcome. I like it. I like it. That was great. Well, please be sure to be sure to drain it. Please be sure to join us. You're drunk. <laughs> You're drunk. <laughs> Please be sure to join us next week as we go over all of this again and talk about the unforgotten Yone.